Welcome back to Texas Stadium. Get set it to kick off for the Friendship Tigers of Wolford. Chad Mandrell, senior. Stephenville will line up and will look to return with a starburst if they kick it deep. The dealer man is Phelps. The three back are Gunn, Zach Hunter, and Matkins. By the way, our Stephenville Parks and Recreation Department Athlete of the Week this week, Sterling Doty. Sterling got his uh, athletic career started at uh, Stephenville Parks and Recreation Department. You can sign your child up for that. And good things may be able to happen for you as well. Maybe some future yellow jackets and honeybees. Mandrell getting set. Approaches, and we are underway. High, high pooch kick that will be fair caught by O'Neill at the 28-yard line, and that's where the Stigma Yellow Jackets will begin. First and 10 at their own 28 here against Friendship in the Class 4A. You know, nobody Division kicks two. it deep anymore. Not they? to us. <laughs> They've seen the starburst too many times. Uh, who can blame them? Well, I haven't got to call a starburst return since early in the season. That is the Region 1, Class 4A, oh, Division 2, Regional Final, Regional Championship. You know what it is? It's Stephenville Friendship. Thank you. <laughs> That's and really a lot And we're playing in Thanksgiving weekend. That's right. Stephenville comes out on offense. One receiver to each side. Two backs in the backfield behind Browles under center. Now Hunter, the tailback, goes in motion to the near side. Play action. Now throwing out to Hunter on the flats. Across the 30. Cuts inside to the 35 and out of bounds at the 37-yard line. They will say, though, however, he did get down before going out of bounds. The clock will continue to run. A pickup of eight. Second and two for Stephenville. Man, what a great block by TJ. That was TJ that turned the, uh, the cornerback inside, and uh, that allowed Zach to get around the corner. In fact, that was the only blocker out there. So if TJ doesn't make that block, that play goes from nowhere. Instead, ends up going for almost nine. Hunter, the receiver that time, was the tailback in motion. Second down, a short two for the Jackets with Bryles under center. One back behind him. Inside trap handoff to Haney, who fumbles the football. The ball is at the 39-yard line, and no signal yet on who has the football. It goes to Friendship. Number 55. Inside trap handoff to the fullback. It looked like a good handoff to Haney. Haney just dropped the football when he got near the line. It may have been just a touch low on the handoff, but still a tough break for the Jackets as they turn the ball over on their own end of the field at the 39-yard line as Friendship now on their first offensive series. Just underway here in the Bank of America first quarter. That's the 12th fumble lost uh, for the Stephenville Yellow Jackets on the season. Vineyard under center, two backs behind him. Inside trap, handoff going to Rodriguez. Rodriguez will get inside to the 34-yard line, a pickup of five on the play, second and five for the Tigers. And he was punished running inside, and uh, I believe it was Gordon Carroll was the first guy there, and then he got some help from the linebackers, but good game down there right at five yards. Uh, I believe they'll officially call it five yards. Well, you know, Derek came off that big game last week as he had over 90 yards rushing in the ball game. And uh, they tried to go right back to him, pop something. Did, I agree with you, Boots. It looked to me like that handoff was a little bit low. Second down, a long five for the Tigers. Eye right, formation behind Vineyard this time, giving to the fullback. He'll go forward for two yards. That is it. To the 33 is officially the spot, so about a yard and a half gained. It will be third down and four for the Tigers. And this is Tiger football, pound, pound, pound with the big offensive line that they have. They can throw the football, though, and they will continue to pound you and then uh, swing the uh, fullback out uh, into the uh, flat. you got to watch that. Of course, number nine, uh, Nathan Nichols. And uh, watch for receivers uh, Moore and Kirby. That is 22 and 5. Kirby and Moore do split to the near side. Eye formation again behind Vineyard. Vineyard, play action. Dropping back, throwing across the middle, has a receiver, it's caught and then dropped, or is it a fumble? Ah, uh, that's incomplete. They were real incomplete. He was caught at the 21-yard line momentarily. Cal Gilson put a heck of a wall up on Kirby after the ball arrived. I'm not so sure that wasn't a fumble. I think it was a fumble myself, and he recovered it back. Which is a break for Stephenville, because he would have had the ball at the 21-yard line. Instead, it is incomplete and sets up fourth and four in decision time for the Tigers early on. 9.57 to go in the Bank of America first quarter. I think the only decision you have is what play do you call here. Zero, it's... zero. They will go for it. Will the Tigers of Wolf with friendship? 16-13, 5.37 to go in the fourth at Kyle Field. Texas on top. Fourth and four for the Tigers. Split backs behind Vineyard. Straight drop. Vineyard looking to throw out in the flats. High over the head of the intended yep. receiver and a flag's going to come down. There may have been contact, but my question is, was the football catchable? 
Uh, no, it wasn't. And uh, I, I think the uh, coaching staff for Stephenville should holler at that, and they are right now. That was not catchable at all. It's pass interference against Stephenville. Jeff Scott will be flagged on the play. The intended receiver was Brian Moore, and you hear the booing going on. He did interfere with the man. There's no doubt about that, but I'm not sure the ball was catchable. That break goes the way of French if they get the first down. Texas A&M has just scored to take the lead in that game with five minutes to go. First and 10 for the Tigers at the Jacket 28 yard line. Vineyard under center with Nichols and Rodriguez in the eye behind him. Split receivers to both sides, giving to the tailback Rodriguez. He has stacked up at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one. It'll be second and nine. Well, all, so far, early breaks going toward uh, going toward the friendship and away from Stephenville. They got the uh, got the turnover, and then they got the uh, the call there on the third or fourth and four play on the pass interference on Scott. Notice that pass play was done right in front as well as the Tiger coaching staff who got to politic a lot, if you will, with the side judge who made that call. Well, that offensive line is big, Boots. There's, uh, there's no doubt about that. But so far, uh, Stephenville's defense has handled it. They're in a six-man front right now. Second down and nine for the Tigers. Somebody jumped up front. We'll just have to see if... Craig Park said that it was the... Uh, Left guard, that would be uh, Stephen Dale. Let's see what the officials say. Whether it's encroachment or illegal procedure. The way Parks uh, burnt, uh, jumped across and hit him, yeah, it is legal procedure. You can see that he felt that was indeed what happened. Back the Tigers at five. It'll be second down and 14 now from outside the uh, 31, almost the 32-yard line of Stephenville. 9-10 to go here in the Bank of America. First quarter, Stephenville zero, Wolford Friendship zero. They bring Kirby back in, leave the, uh, and then run with the receiver Brian Moore out. A little late getting back into the huddle as they're going to have to hurry to get to the line. Nine seconds on the play clock. Vineyard now gets up under center. Two backs behind him. Straight drop for Vineyard. Looking to throw. He's in some trouble. Being flushed to the near side. Throwing out the flats. Has a receiver. It's caught at the five. Touchdown. Johnny Swinconos, the big tight end. 6'5", 221 pounds. Got separation from Feltz on the play. And... I think Phelps didn't realize, or Jesse Fanning did not realize how big Swinconos was. The ball was over Fanning's head, who had pretty decent position, but Swinconos, being 6'5", was able to go up and get the ball at about the five, bring it down, and stroll into the end zone. So once again, in another playoff game, not unfamiliar for Stephenville, the Yellow Jackets are behind in the early goings. Well, and Stephenville committed the cardinal rule. Fanning did that time. He went for the ball instead of the play. Getting set for the extra point. Snap down. Kick on the way. It is up, and it is good. We'll go to Steve Ross, who happened to be in the vicinity of Coach Copeland. I think you didn't have to be too far from him to hear what he had to say after that play. I don't have to ask Ross. I can read lips. <laughs> he got, they got a tongue lashing, brother. Kick is away. High end over end kick will be taken by O'Neill at the 24. We'll return this one across the 30. 35 makes a move at the 40. Gets up to the 45. That's a midfield is O'Neill. And Stephen will begin after the 25-yard return at the midfield stripe. First and 10, Stephenville. Steve Ross, come to me. How was it on the sideline with Coach Copeland right then? Well, my ears are still blistering. He, <laughs> he is a defense a pretty good talking to, but after he got through with that, he told him that the thing they need to do on that play is to maintain outside containment. That's what allowed the tight end to get so open and have the mismatch on the cornerback that he did. All righty, yeah, first and 10 point. for the Jackets. And I think he's uh, hollering at the defensive ends uh, for allowing him to do that. Trips to the far side, twins to the near side. Vineyard did have a lot of time on that throw. Riles is in shotgun. Snap back to Browse, setting up, looking to throw, looking, still looking, now scrambling, throwing across the middle, has O'Neill caught at the 38-yard line, a first down and a gain of 12 on the completion from Browse to O'Neill on the crossing pattern to the near side. Man, what a uh, what a great uh, what a great run, throw, and an even better catch. O'Neill dragging across. That puts Kendall over 2,400 yards passing on the season and uh, near 1,000 rushing, so you do the math. He's getting on up there. 
Two to the near side, one to the far side as far as receivers are concerned. Browse is in motion as he sends the flanker. Gun in motion to the far sideline. Play action, throwing out the flats for Gun. Great block, gets down to the 35-yard line. Ooh, we might, have, four. we might have got away with a hold right there. Looks like one of the cornerbacks got grabbed by one of our receivers out there. Boy, also one of the linemen was releasing out to get a block, and it looks like Gun, instead of trying to get up behind him, cut it back to the middle and didn't get quite as much as I thought the play originally was going to go for. Only three yards on the completion, so it's second down and seven, the ball at the 35-yard line of friendship. The twins to the near side, only one defender on them right now. They'll roll over a safety, I'm sure. Bryles under center. He fumbles the football. It's loose. They got it. Friendship has gotten another football. Same guy. Fumble. Same guy got the first one. Stephen Ball on consecutive opening drives have fumbled around the exchange scenario from the snap or the quick handoff to the fullback. And then now it goes over to Friendship again. Stephenville trailing 7-0 here in the 7:29 mark of the Bank of America first quarter. And, and Art, during coffee with Coach during the timeouts, told me this is what he was worried about, that his team was going to take this week off because of all the reports on that Stephenville should blow the team out. And he was worried that Stephenville would not take care of business. And so far, his worries have come true. Inside trap handoff, Rodriguez is stuffed in the backfield by Howe. A loss of three yards. It's second down and 13. Well, let's see. They took, uh, they took Jeff Scott out, put an extra uh, backer in there that time, Boots. Who is that? Is that... Uh... I, 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 can't, I can't tell from up here who the extra backer is. We'll check here in just a moment. But uh, Scott is standing on the sideline. So they're expecting him to obviously run the football here. Second down and 13. Six-man front, isn't that as well? Split backs behind Vineyard. Vineyard giving straight ahead to his fullback. Gets out to about the 39-yard line. Greg Parks making the tackle defensive. Tackle is for 48? Stephenville. Yeah, that's who it was. Now uh, Ken Howell, who said made the tackle on the previous play. And, uh, and Scott comes back in. The fullback had the carry for... Friendship, number nine, Nathan Nichols. It sets up third down. Oh, and a short seven needed for the Tigers inside their own 40-yard line. Seven-nothing, Wolford Friendship on top of Stephenville. Vineyard rolling out in some trouble. Will be sacked all the way back to the 24-yard line. A strong safety blitz is coming up from his strong safety position. Trey Feltz sacks Vineyard all the way back at the 25-yard line. It'll be fourth and long, and the Tigers will be forced to punt. Well, just a, a great call there by uh, Coach Copeland. As, uh, he said, if you're going to throw the football, you're going to be throwing it on your back heels. And uh, that was just a great, great play by Feltz. One thing important on a, on a play like that, Boots, is to get there. The other one is to make the tackle, and Feltz did not let him get away. Feltz and Bryles are deep in punt return formation, standing at their own 45-yard line. Getting set to punt is Scroggins for the Tigers. Snap back to Scroggins. Punt is away. Wobbly kick will be fair caught by Browles. Just a yard shy oh, of the 50-yard uh, line. Browles is nailed after the fair catch. After the 27-yard kick, but no signal. No flag, excuse me. 48-yard line is officially the spot, and that's where Steam will begin in their own 48. 5.37 to go in the Bank of America first quarter. Wolf for Friendship 7, Stephenville nothing. You see Coach Browles out there. Politics. He's politic Look at him. He's, he's really, he's screaming about that, and I don't blame him. I mean, you just can't do that. Trips to the near side. One receiver, O'Neill, to the far side. Browse is in shotgun with Hunter now in the backfield coming in motion toward the trips. Snap back to Browse. Flags down the right tackle jump for Stephenville. There was a little bit of a delay with the snap, and it caused the line to jump momentarily. So the five-yard penalty, we marched off against Stephenville, and the Stephenville offense just does not look sharp here in the early going. Well, yeah, you think with two turnovers and... Uh, and mental mistakes. Yeah. When, they, when they've run plays, they've been successful and, and gained big yardage, but now they move it all the way back to the Stephenville 43-yard line and start uh, in a hole first and 15, trailing 7 to nothing in this ballgame. That first scoring drive for a friendship, by the way, seven plays, 39 yards, took 234. Pitch to the near side, Hunter. Hunter gets a good block to the outside, 45, gets almost to the original line of scrimmage and passed it to the 49-yard line, a pickup of six on the play. It'll be second down and nine. And that good block was uh, Derek Haney. That uh, scoring summary brought to you by Lupies. Second 
Second down and nine for Stephenville. Stephen lines up in the swinging gate with all the linemen to the near side of the field with Hunter behind them. Browles is in shotgun formation with a center and one fullback by himself. Now Browles is rolling out and he'll tuck it up and run. In a lot of trouble now, makes a one-man miss and another all the way to the near side. He reversed his field, 45-40, great block, 35-30, cuts back and now out of bounds at the 28-yard line, down to the 22-yard line. 29 yards on the scamper, if you will, from Kendall Browse. He was in the swinging gate formation. He in the center and one back were the only people in the middle of the field when he took the snap. He rolled to the far side. A lot of open territory. He took about three or four steps downfield and completely reversed his field, came to the near side, got some good set of blocks, and then weaved his way through the blue jerseys of friendship. First and 10 at the 22 of the Tigers. Browse and shotgun sends the one back Hunter to the far side. Browse setting up, throwing out in the flats for Hunter. Gets a good block, 25, 20, inside, great move, 15, 10, down to the six yard line before he's stripped up. A first down for Steve Mill, it'll be first and go to go from the six that was of friendship. Chad Mandrell that saved the touchdown. 15 yards on the reception from Browse to Hunter. Boy, that was a great play by Mandrell. He come back and uh, came back and got to Derek from uh, check that to Zach from behind. Well, the Longhorns better do something. Oh, they're beat. So it's first and go to go for the Jackets at the six yard line of Wolford Friendship. High formation this time behind Bryles. Giving to the second man through that sack gets down to the two. It'll be second and go to go from the two yard line. Well, like I said, you know, when they have successfully run plays, <laughs> they've, they've had great success. They've moved the ball easily against Friendship. They've been their own worst enemy in penalties and uh, two turnovers early. 4.16 to go in the Bank of America first quarter. Wolford Friendship 7, Stephenville nothing. Stephenville at the uh, Friendship 2-yard line, second and goal from that position. Browns is under center, same formation, I formation behind him. Giving to the first man through, that is Haney. Haney gets close to the goal line. He will be stopped just shy of it. It'll be inside the one, and it'll be third and goal to go from just out, just inside the 1-yard line. Well, this may be uh, hammer time. And Let's here see. it comes. Yeah, here it comes. You've got Lee and Howe and Walker as your backs with Jilson. Haney as well. Jilson is in there as well on this, uh, uh, as you said, Scott Lee comes in at the one yard line. So Browse will line up with the three backs behind him in the wishbone look, if you will. Browse under center giving to Haney the first man through. He's very close. There may have been a fumble on the play as the uh, beanbag came out. Let's wait and see. I believe there was a fumble. They're still looking for the football underneath. It'll be fourth down as I believe Browse comes away with the ball. He did. Browse went under, got the, the uh, ball as Haney had fumbled it again at the goal line. They're going to spot the ball at the one. That's where the fumble must have come back to. And now it'll be fourth and goal from the one. Haney was in the end zone. I mean, his body was in the end zone. The ball just didn't make it with him. So they got a pretty good push. I, I think they'll probably go right back to that play. If they don't, they'll have them pinned awfully deep. Fourth and goal from the Jackets at the Friendship one yard line. Three backs behind Bryles under center. Bryles running the option. He'll scoot over himself easily as he faked the dive. Stephenville pulls within one, seven to six at the 240 mark of the Bank of America first quarter. The extra point is upcoming. That well, time Bryles that was, was, so, fake, was so wide open after the fake in which Friendship really sold out on it. Either Browse scores easily or his pitch man, who had no one on yeah, him either. Good point. Of course, you're thinking there is uh, no mistakes. Just, just run it in yourself. Jackets getting set for the extra point. Doty with the snap. And the Jackets jump off sides. By the way, Nelson, 52 of 62 on the year. That is not bad. Especially from what he did early in the season when there was a few games where he missed several extra points early in the season. He's really turned it on since then as far as the consistency with the kicking. A lot of discussion going on as far as, well, they did have a defender that jumped into the neutral zone. Right at Douglas. Douglas jumped almost in a self-defensive yeah, position. And, and sometimes they'll call it that way. I think this is going to be against Stevenville, though. Nope, they did call it again. Well, do you go for two? Well, they moved the ball uh, inside the two-yard line. We did this last week. I think we kick here, don't we? 
Yeah, I, I don't think it's a situation where this early in the game you even want to think about something like that. Well, it's not. The, the one point is bigger than the two right now. As so even, as that sounds. even Nelson getting set to kick the extra point. Doty will have the snap. Patronus the hold. Snap back. Hold down. Kick is on the way. It is up, and it is good. Welcome back to Texas State. And that last scoring drive, eight plays, 52 yards, took 257 Browse on the one-yard run. That uh, scoring summary brought to you by Barnes and McCullough. Getting set to kick off is Ryan Harris. Harris will kick this one deep into the sun, and it will go out of bounds at the three-yard line. That's a tough break for uh, Stephenville because Harris had kicked that one deep into the sun, and the return man for the Tigers, Brandon Scroggins, was having a hard time picking up the ball. And I thought he was going to reach up there and grab it. By the way, I think the Aggies have just won the football game. And don't you think that's kind of fitting after what's happened this yeah, week? Because you is. thought something like that would probably happen for the Aggies, who were an underdog in this game with Texas uh, ranked number six in the nation, according to AP. 20 to 16 looks like it's going to be the final score. They just recovered a fumble. Well, they're going to make us kick it again. That's good. We'll kick it back down there in the sun. Don't you get it at the 35? Or 40? If you want, at the 35. 35. High school. No well, friendship elects to make Steemo kick off again. I guarantee you, Coach Browse will utilize that sun down there and have him you kick know, you out down in the corner. And this is the first time Ryan Harris has kicked off in about three weeks. He's the deep kicking specialist, and in the first week of the playoffs, he was sick. They didn't want to kick to the deep men last week. So it's been a while since Harris has kicked off. He may get a hold of this one a little bit better than he did that last one, even. Back deeper, Scroggins, Thomas, and Moore for the Tigers. 7-7, our score with 2.35 to go in the Bank of America first quarter. Harris's kick is away. This is a wobbler that hits at the 20, comes down and is taken up at the 18 to the 20, 25 across the 30, out to the 38-yard line. Brian Moore is the return man. And so they will get good field position, about three to four more yards than they would have if they had taken the ball out of bounds. Yeah, okay. So well, there's three. always that chance you can break one, I guess. We'll go to, uh, we'll go to Ross after this play. Uh, you know, I, I think personally the, uh, you know, Stephenville Yellow Jackets not really having a whole lot of trouble moving the football. First and 10 for the Tigers at their own 39-yard line. Vineyard is under center. Nichols and Rodriguez behind him. Nichols takes the handoff out to the 45-yard. Good running for him. Well, Steve, uh, I, I think the offense has got to feel pretty confident, don't you? Well, they do, and that offensive line, as they've done all year, is doing the job up front. I think as Stephenville scores again, you're going to see him mix it up and go down the field even more. But as Coach Ross pointed out, down here on the field, the tight end among, stands out among all the players for friendship. The guy that caught the touchdown pass, really impressive-looking athlete, and he is towering over Stephenville's defensive back. He's talking about Johnny Swincano, 6'5", 221-pound tight end. Hand off to Rodriguez. He will get back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Hey, Steve, I want to come back to you one more time. I saw all the offensive players take their helmets off, and there was something that was very similar with all of them. Yeah, the offensive line's gone blonde, too. <laughs> all offensive linemen, linemen bleached their hair. Uh, I think they tried to go blonde. It kind of came out orange on a few of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened to the UT today. All right, it'll be third down and four. You can see how loud it is down on the field when Steve turns his mic on. Third and four for the Tigers at their own 45-yard line. A minute 15 and counting here in the Bank of America. First quarter, we're tied at seven. Straight drop for Vineyard, looking to throw out in the flats. Great catch is made at the 49-yard line. A diving catch is made, and that is right at the position needed for the first down. Brian Moore made the catch. I'd say he got it by about a half a yard. It's spotted on the 50-yard side of the 49-yard line, and that's just where he needed to go to get the uh, first down. They're going to bring it over. That's okay. a long way to bring the chains. Well, Texas still calling timeouts, but uh, there's 14 seconds, and I think they're going to get the ball back here in just a moment. But Really? It's, yeah, uh, RC's already got the, uh, the Gatorade bass, so I think it's official. It is a first down for Friendship. 
What a great call. That you knew that it, that would be? Yeah. By the nose of the football. So it's first and 10 for the uh, Tigers at their own 49 yard line. Friendship seven, Stephenville seven under a minute to go in the Bank of America first quarter. Two backs behind Vineyard. They are again Nichols and Rodriguez split receivers to both sides. Giving the ball to Nichols. He's stacked up by Parks behind the line. The ball is loose. It's picked up by Gordon. Carroll, but they're going to rule it dead. And if they had not, Carroll would have scored. They will say that the ground caused the fumble. There was no fumble. It'll be second down at 10. And well, I got news for you. I think 50 had a lot to do with it as well. 50 up oh, front. Oh, oh, man. Parks is the one that nailed Nichols as he came through. You talk about stuffing the run, brother. That's uh, on this series, that's the second one that Craig has made, and that was a big time play right there. Second down and 10 for the Tigers. Boy, Carroll just did not want to give the football back after that play was over. Yeah, okay, who's the blame here? High right, formation this time behind Vineyard with Rodriguez at the tail. Rodriguez will take the handoff. Check that it is play action, throwing out in the flats. It's picked off by Gunn, and then he drops the football. We'll have to wait and see what the ruling is. They will say it is an incomplete pass. Gunn slaps his hand on the turf. Has he had that one picked as he stepped up in front of Kirby? And when he went down, he could not quite control it. The ball squirts out. It'll be third down and 10 now. That is the end of the Bank of America first quarter. Our score, Wolford Friendship 7, Stephenville 7. Back in one minute on KSTV. We begin the second quarter brought to us by Cook Club or seven apiece. Wolf of Friendship and Stephenville, the Tigers of Friendship, have third down and 10 for their own 49 yard line. Vineyard under center, Trace Vineyard, senior quarterback, split backs behind him, straight drop, trying to set up the screen. He's in some trouble. He'll have to throw it quick and it's incomplete. The Jackets had an all out rush on Vineyard as he was trying to set up the screen. The one receiver on the play was nailed by Jilson after the ball was just short hopped to him, and it'll be fourth and 10. That's the old good news, bad news. Good news for uh, the offense. The offensive lineman let the defenders release like you're supposed to. The bad news is they were in a blitz. <laughs> and they got through so fast yeah. that Vineyard didn't even have time to throw uh, on the setting up of the screen. We've got some first quarter numbers. We'll give them to you right after this play. Scroggins getting set to punt for the Tigers. Back deep are Feltz and Browse. Browse having to shade his eyes from the sun as the punt will come to him. High, high punch will come down at the 25. Take a great friendship roll inside the 15, inside the 10 inside the five and will be down at the one yard line. 50 yards on the punt. And I can't blame the return men for Steve Mill. They got out of the way of that football, but they were having to look right up through the hole in Texas Stadium and right into the sun. First quarter numbers, friendship, two yards rushing, 36 passing for a total of 38 yards. For Steamville, 42 rushing, 40 passing for a total of 82. Time of possession, friendship had it seven minutes. To almost uh, five for Stephen. Well, Stimo gets a chance to uh, pad some stats now with having 99 yards in front of them. Yeah, no kidding. And they could take a little time off the clock here. 11.40 to go in the Cook Lumber's second quarter. Browse is standing in his own end zone as he takes the snap. Quick hitter is to O'Neill to tight end across the 10, the 12 to the 13 yard line. Just a little hot pattern goes for 11 to 12 yards. Great. It's a first down Stephenville. Great fake by Kendall there. He's, he faked the toss to Zach who's standing over on his right hip. And he took a step that way and even put the ball down there if you notice. And then just pulled it up, hit that hot uh, pass to uh, O'Neill. Good catch and good run. And it was also a good touch for Kendall because you would think from that close in he could drill it. He just kind of pushed it over there. Easy catch for O'Neill to make. First and 10, almost to the 14-yard line. Play action. Browse setting up, wanting to throw the deep ball on the sideline. Trying to go up for it is Avalos. Flags yeah. will come down, and Steamboat finally gets a break on one of the penalty calls. Back deep was Brian Moore, the defender on Avalos, and Moore kind of ran into Avalos as he tried to make a play on the ball. By the way, now this is a tough call because the officials are discussing it. Let's wait well, and see if they are going to make the interference call. Yeah, yeah Avalos was uh, not allowed to get to the ball. That's got to be a defensive foul. And it is defensive pass interference against Friendship. This will be a. By the way, talking to uh, talking to some of the uh, the broadcast uh, guys from Friendship for the game, uh, one of their regular cornerbacks, and I believe uh, they said it was uh, uh, Selby is injured and so that's why you're seeing more 
uh, playing in there to, uh, this afternoon. And so maybe a little inexperienced back there in the uh, secondary. And you're giving up a lot of size, too, because Patrick Selby, 6'2", 185 pounds, is replaced by Brian Moore, who looks, uh, to me, about 5'8", 147 pounds. Well, what, is, what do they have him listed at? Yeah, 5'8". 5'8 may be a little bit giving on that one as well. Yeah. We can ask Ross. He's well, on the Four receivers to the far side, one to the near side, throwing the high up for grabs. Catch. What a catch by O'Neill. Almost. He fumbles it, though, as he hits the ground. It was just oh, the high that. law pattern to him as he was 6'5", O'Neill going up against 5'8". More. More on the play, and so it's second down and 10, and boy, O'Neill went high in the air with just the... Browns takes one step back and throws it straight up in the air. I think that uh, that ground knocked that ball loose because I thought he had it. I was like you. I thought he had it when he came down. Second down and 10. It's this. The, it's a simple high fade pattern that's only about 10 yards down the field. It's high, hard to describe. Second down and 10 for the Jackets at their own 28-yard line. Seven apiece, yeah. and the Jackets jump off sides again. Boy, Steamville just does not look sharp. And when you're jumping off sides and making three snap penalties, that's a pretty good indication of where your mind is during this ball game. Yeah, uh, that was Keggins who uh, he went down and then picked his hand up. I, in fact, I thought he might be an eligible receiver there for just a second. It looked like he wanted to go in motion. I, I, it did. I, that was weird. Huh? But he knew instantly he had done yeah, wrong. Yeah, he just stayed down. He kind of froze when everybody stood up when they threw the flag and blew the whistle, and he's like, hey. Second and 15 for the Jackets at their own 24-yard line. Browse now with trips to the near side, twins to the far side. Browse rolling to the near side, setting up, throwing in the flats. Has a receiver, O'Neill makes the catch at the 35, 36, mm. goes out of bounds at the 37. A pickup of about uh, 12, 13, 14, now 14 yards, and it'll be a long one needed for the Jackets coming up. Yeah, because they've got him marked uh, almost to the 38, about 37 and a half, so... And we got to get to the, what, 38 and a half, roughly? Yes, a yeah. full yard needed for the Jackets. I guess Jacob knows what he's talking about, statistician extraordinaire. It may be time for a quarterback sneak here or something. Third and one for the Jackets. Browse under center will hand off from the left side. Hunter. Hunter is drilled, but I believe he did get enough for the first down. Coming up to make the stop was number 60, Michael Ness, defensive tackle. 6'1", 270 pounder, took just Zach barely. Hunter off his feet. Well, he ends up getting almost two yards, so yeah, he cleared it by about a yard. First and 10 for the Jack. It's just outside the 39-yard line. 7-7 seven, seven our score here with 10-51 and counting to go in the second quarter. Straight drop for Browse. Looking, looking. Now he'll escape across the 40. Makes a move. Cross midfield. 45-40. Cuts to the outside. Makes another miss. 35 going to the sideline. 30. Keeps his feet and goes out of bounds at the 26-yard line. How dangerous is Kendall Browse after he scampers 35 yards when he drops back in the pocket. The pocket starts to collapse. He sees nothing downfield. He tucks it under. Dangerous in the open field is Browse. First and 10 at the 26-yard line of Friendship. And that puts him over 1,000 yards rushing on the season. In fact, he only needed one on that play. So now he's up to 1,034 rushing, over 2,400 passing. Kendall having a pretty darn good year for his first year as starting quarterback as a junior. First and 10 for the Jackets at the Friendship 26. Browse under center. Play action. Setting up, throwing out in the flats for Mackins. Mackins makes one man miss and another 20 to the 15. A burst of speed, 10. He fumbles the football. It's down at the eight yard line and Friendship has gotten on the ball. That is the fourth fumble of the game. The third turnover for Stephenville. 18 yards on the reception and that's exactly what Jeremy did last week. Mackins was running with the football out away from his body where somebody who he passes has the ability to reach out and slap the ball away. It's easy to see on film. It's easy to see from here. And I know there's no one more disgusted than Mackins, but it's a scenario that he's got to correct. Well, and it's uh, unfortunately that time as uh, compared to last week, uh, there was no jackets there to recover the ball for him, only blue shirts. And he was going to be inside the five before he would have been a tackle, but instead, the ball goes over to Friendship at their own eight-yard line. Vineyard under center, giving to Rodriguez. Rodriguez finds a little bit of a seam, but he is plowed over at about the 12-yard line by Scott Lee. Well, Stephenville had only lost 11 fumbles coming into this game in, in 12 games. Now they've lost three. 
and they've all been costly. Hmm. Well, one of them gave Friendship their first score. That one cost Stephenville a score. Oh, so yeah. those two of those fumbles are a 14-point swing. Stephenville and Wolf of Friendship tied at seven. Two to the far side, I formation with a tight end on the near side is Swincondos. Play action. Sacked all the way back to the five-yard line is Vineyard, and coming across for the sack was Big Scott Lee. He didn't bite on the fake at all. Yeah, they wanted to uh, play action out of that boots, and uh, you're right. Scott Lee just came with a with a vengeance there, and uh, they never, ever had a chance. Boy, that time Vineyard didn't even have a chance to set up to try to throw the football. He faked the dive, and before he could take one step away from his fullback, on top of his back of his own was Scott Lee. The sack back to the, again, the great spot at the six. It's third down and 12. Seven apiece, under nine minutes to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Straight drop for Vineyard, looking to throw over the top. A catch is made at the 25-yard line, first down Man, he for all Friendship. Day. As Brady Gunn was the defender on the play, making the catch for Friendship was Chad Mandrell. And you're right, he dropped back into the end zone and was not pressured by anyone. First and 10 for the Tigers out at their own 25-yard line. By the way, the Nebraska-Colorado game just started. Nebra uh, Colorado kicked an onside kick to start the game. They didn't get it. Nebraska scores 40 yards on the first play of the game. Alexander goes to the rod. <laughs> yes. First and 10 for the Tigers. I asked if 14 points was enough before this game. Eh, probably not. Tigers jump off sides. It'll be first and 15. Well, I think there's a lot of people still dealing with Thanksgiving turkey maybe in the belly right now, clouding the uh, I know I am. thought processes. Well, a legal procedure against the uh, Tigers of friendship. Boy, Stephenville just does not look like they have their head in this game right now. Well, you know, and, and, and you heard for the last three weeks that if you get through the first two rounds and Stephenville has a chance maybe to take a deep breath, whatever spin on it you want to put, that's what this Stephenville team has been talking about, and the coaches told me they were concerned this week that this might happen. First and 15. Inside trap handoff to the fullback. He will go for about a yard and a half, and now a late flag oh. comes down right in the middle of the pile. That's the umpire that usually throws holding flag, but boy, that was awfully late, wasn't it? This will be a personal foul. I know it will be holding against Friendship. Now they, they're going to refuse that one, I'm sure. Because it'll set up second down and 14, or you can push them back. Now they will refuse the penalty, so it'll be second and 14 for the Tigers at their own 22-yard line. 7.57 to go here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Stephenville 7, Wolf of Friendship 7. Friendship cannot run the football on the Stephenville Yellow Jackets. The only success they've had is passing the ball. That's usually where you want a football team, especially if they're predominantly a running team. Second down and 14, high formation behind Vineyard. Split receivers to both sides. Giving the ball to Rodriguez. Check that it's play action. Looking to throw his Vineyard. Scrambling to the near side, it's out. And a great defensive play is made by Fanning to knock the ball away from Mandrell. It'll be third down and 14. And what a great fake made by Vineyard because I thought Rodriguez still had the ball. Vineyard then made two defenders shake as he got away from them. I, I can't believe he broke those tackles. That was a great play by uh, Trace Vineyard, the senior quarterback from Friendship. Trace Vineyard, 5'10", only 155 pounds, and he had two 220-pounders draped all over him. That's a big third down for the defense. They can hold here. They can get great field position, probably somewhere up around midfield. Third down and 14 for the Tigers at their own 22-yard line. Straight drop for Vineyard. Looking to throw, throwing out, and ball is batted away, and it's almost picked off. Oh, man. It may have been Harmon with the tip. No, check that. It was Scott Lee with yep. the tip, and then almost making the interception. Could you see? I thought it was Scott that almost had the interception. Uh, Steve's probably got it down there on the Steve sideline. Ross, tell us, who had the tip, who had the almost pick? Well, it was a combination of Lee and Phelps with the tip, but it was Clayton Harmon hitting himself in the head because he had that one go right through his hand. Oh, Harmon almost with well, the pick. That's why he plays the D-line, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're 6'6", 280. Yeah. Maybe a good tight end. Friendship will now punt the ball away. Scroggins hits it. High, high spiraling kick. It will be fair caught by Browles, as John said, close to midfield. 27 yards on the kick. The ball's actually spotted at the 49 of Friendship, and that's where the Jackets begin first and 10. 
Well, that's uh, exactly what you want to do after a costly turnover like that. Hold them to three and out, or well, they got one first down on that pass. But, but get the ball back in your and they're into the field. They're right? into the field, the good field position. Take it and go right down the field and score now. First and ten for the Jackets at the Friendship 49-yard line. Split receivers to both sides. Looks like a little diff different atmosphere on the defensive uh, bench right now with Coach Copeland. Than it was earlier. He's now twins to the near side. Browse in shotgun, giving the ball to Hunter. Hunter is in a lot of trouble, and he'll be thrown down for a two-yard loss. It'll be second down and 12. Yeah, that was a nice tackle by Ross Peters, number 64, six foot, 240 pounds, senior. In fact, uh, dropped uh, Zach for loss, something that he has not e experienced uh, much. Second and 12 for uh, Stephenville. 651 and counting here, seven to seven, Friendship and Stephenville. Browns under center. Whistles blown. Good grief. Boy, this is another pre-snap penalty, I believe, against Stephenville. Boy, you know how frustrating this is for the coaching staff. Illegal motion against the Jackets. Well, you know, I have a feeling I know what halftime is going to be like in the Stephenville locker room. Stephenville averaging about seven penalties a game. Five already here with uh, 6.40 to go in the first half. Mm. Oof. Trips to the far side, one to the near side. There was a home team that played here uh, yesterday, had a little bit of that trouble as well. Browse in shotgun, snap back to him, setting up. Good protection, going deep across the middle. Halves Hunter, caught at the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Zach Hunter. The connection will go 56 yards, and Steve Mellis taking the lead, 13 to 7, with the extra point upcoming. Man, just a great read by uh, Kendall and a great route by Zach. It looked like he might have overthrown it, but Zach just ran underneath the ball. He had coverage by Juan Martinez, who is a senior cornerback, and uh, they found the mismatch again, Boots. Hunter was in the backfield that time, and so that gives you an idea of once he caught the ball at the 20, how much time Bryles had to sit back there and wait on him to clear out of the line of scrimmage and then get all the way to the 20 when he made the reception and then pulled away from the defenders. Eben Nelson getting set for the extra point. Snap back, hold down, kick is on the way, it is up, and it is good. With 6.22 to go in the quick lumber, second quarter, season 14, over 3 back in one minute on KSTV. Texas Stadium, 14 to seven. Stephenville on top of Wolf with Friendship. Johnny, the last scoring drive. Well, only three plays went 49 yards. Took 53 seconds. Hunter on that 56-yard pass from Browse. Sports summary brought to you by Walmart Vision Center. Hunter's deep, deep end over end kick will be taken at the goal line, up to the five, uh, across the 10, 15, and will be taken down by Silva at the 21-yard line. Brandon Stroggins was the return man for the Tigers, and at the 21 is where the Tigers will begin first and 10. And I know what the coaching staff is saying right now, Johnny. See? Three and out, get it right back, and let's put another score on the board before we go to half. Yeah, see, see guys what happens when we hang on to the football? I mean, not a problem. First and 10 for the Tigers at their own 21. Stephenville 14, Wolf of Friendship 7. 6-12 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Tigers to the line, split receivers to both sides. Eye formation behind Vineyard under center. Play action for Vineyard in some trouble. We'll throw it out in the flats. It's going to be picked off by Gunn. It's a 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Brady Gunn. And a flag will be thrown on Brady Gunn because of celebration at the end of the play. It was a 19-yard pickoff return. 
Now what the heck, throw the flag, we don't care. Brady excited, holding on to an interception, and why not? And returning it for a touchdown. It'll be 15 yards against Stephen, but they'll probably march this one off. Is it on the extra point attempt or on the, no, on the, kick. On the next kick? It is good. That is the call. Unsportsmanlike penalty against Stephenville. So it's 20 to 7 now with the extra point upcoming. Stephenville lines up in the swinging gates. Will they do that or will they send the extra point crew out onto the field? No, they'll send them out. No, they're going to run it. They are going to go for two. Stephenville will go out of the swinging gate and will go for two. Feltz is the quarterback in this scenario. He's in the middle of the field by himself. Throwing the deep fade pattern up for Douglas. Douglas goes up, it's high over his head, into the band. And so the two-point conversion is no good. With 6.04 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Back Texas Stadium. Stephenville going to have to uh, kick off not from the 40, instead the 25 after they mark off the penalty. That last scoring uh, from uh, Brady Gunn, 19 yard interception return. The two point uh, extra point failed, and uh, that makes it 20 to 7. Uh, that scoring summary brought to you by Farm Bureau. By the way, Steve Ross, you with us, brother? Still here. 14 to nothing, Nebraska. All right, I got to tell you about. Uh, Stephenville's offensive coordinator, Mike Copeland, on the series before that, when he gathered his defense around, he said, look, guys, we need to tighten it up on first down a little bit and settle down. We're going to get a pick, okay? Boy, he, he's... Uh, he's, he's good. He he's is real good. good. He's, he's real good. <laughs> Alexander scored another touchdown, by the way. Now, for some reason, Stephenville is going to be allowed to kick at the 40-yard line. Was the flag waved off? Look at the coaching staff for friendship. They're wanting to know what the scenario is. You know, I haven't I haven't heard down here, but all I saw Brady Gunn do was high step a little bit as he was going into the end zone, and I'm not sure that that's really taunting. I mean, I just pick my knees up. They coached me to do that. <laughs> and it was a sweet Dion high step from the five, yeah, too. He, he looked good, dude. He looked it? good. You're right. Yeah, he carried it off great. Now the officials will have to converge again, and this is ridiculous. I mean, get well, together, make your decision, and go with it. Well, they might have picked that flag up. I don't know. It's... They're going to talk about it, though. We're talking, we're talking. Uh, by the way, on that uh, score, we want to thank, uh, we want to thank uh, Scott Osman, attorney at law, for a nice uh, donation to uh, the Erath County Meals on Wheels. In fact, it's a $100 donation. We thank Scott for that. How could this take this much time? Now the officials are going to have to go to the friendship bench and explain something. Just kidding. I mean, he threw the flag. and. If he's going to pick it up and wave it off, fine, but let everybody know that. Boy, look at the friendship coaching staff. They are going nuts on the official the referee, Whitecap. Boy, this is a weird scenario. Boy, now the head coach is having to be pulled back by some of his assistants. And I've got to hand it to him. If you're going to go ahead and throw the flag, said kick it from the 40. Nope, now they're going to move it. Or are they? Yep, they're going to move it. Because Ryan Harris went up there and picked up his uh, his team. Now that he's got to come over and explain to Art, I gave in to those guys, all right? I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? Take this much discussion. You called a penalty. It's, it's marked off on the ensuing kick. If you called it, if you picked it up and waved it off, we're kicking at the 40. I can just about guarantee you what Art's saying right now. Hey, if you're going to make the call, make the call, and let's just be done with it. Well, Steve Ross is pretty close. I think he can hear what's being said. We'll go to him here in just a moment. Stevie, can you hear what's being said? Yeah, but I can't repeat much of it. Uh -oh. <laughs> what, what is the gist of the argument, anyway? I really don't know other than I think you guys were on it. But if you're going to make the call, go ahead and stick with it. I don't know why they got crossways with what they did, but they are going to back Stephenville up now. You know friendships from West Texas and other coaches have on khaki shirts and dark triangles. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I was noticing that. I was just looking through the binoculars during that little exchange. So Jackets watch a kickoff from their own 25-yard line. What, what, what took so long to figure that out? 
Well, I think they just didn't communicate with each other. 20 to 7, Steve on top of friendship as the Jackets get ready to kick off with 6.04 remaining in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Harris approaches the ball. Deep end over end kick will be taken at the 20 yard line up to the 25 as Scroggins across the 30, finds a little seam, and then he is plowed under at the 37 yard line. Silva was there for the Stephenville as well as for the Jackets. Monty Derrick making the stop. First and 10 for the Tigers at their own 37 yard line. And they would they would understand plow it under from out in front of West, yeah, up there in the panhandle, you bet. Cotton fields back home right there. First and 10 for the Tigers. Well, uh, the only West Texas thing I can bring to the table, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tumbleweed, SMU and TCU kicking off here in just a couple minutes, about uh, 30 miles from here, due west at Eamon Carter. Jackets may have jumped off sides, hand off to Rodriguez. Rodriguez is tackled at the 43-yard line, and now... It looked like Craig was in the, uh, the neutral zone there when the, when the staff was made. Since it's about five yards on the game, I'm sure they'll take the penalty so they can keep the same down. You know, I was listening to a conversation before the game down in the press box with a couple of guys. I don't know if you heard this. One guy made a pretty interesting point. He said, hey, let me give you one of my pet peeves. So I started listening. Sure. You know, I always like those. He goes, how come in the football... When somebody does something, they never tell who did it. You know, they don't they don't identify the individual who did it. As far as like the officials calling a penalty? Yeah, when they call a penalty. All right. You know, he says, how come they never identify me? But in basketball, not only do they tell you, you got to raise your hand and say it was me. <laughs> Excellent boy. Well, I guess because in football, you can't have five penalties and be thrown out of the game. I guess that's it. I thought that was a pretty good point, though. Boy, how, how would football players feel about it? All right, from now on, when the penalty's on you, I need you to raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hand off to Rodriguez. He's still uh, for a loss by Scott Lee back at the 40-yard line. A loss of about two. It'll be second and six. Boys, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> we're a long ways away from the playing field up here in the press box, but I can I can see it from here, and I know you can too. That defensive line is just whipping that offensive line from friendship. That is impressive, and they're big. Well, and the thing about the backs for friendship, they're not scad backy quick enough to make someone miss, if you will. So once they break the line of scrimmage, if there's no protection from their offensive line, they're going to go down immediately with their hit. Second and seven, handoff of the right side. Rodriguez trying to get to the outside. He's plowed over again by Jilson, and now a flag comes down. Yeah, Ryan Feltz Harris got in. tackled at the 42-yard line. It's going to be holding. Feltz was also filling from his strong safety position. I keep saying plowed under because you're seeing these huge white jerseys just crediting on top of the running backs from Friendship. Johnny was right. It is holding against the Tigers. Stephen will say back them up. Yeah, they want that field position now, especially where that defense is holding. 446 here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Stephenville 20, Wolf of Friendship 7. Man, I, it's just impressive. We're running a pretty much a 6-2 defense right now when you say boots. I mean, pretty standard, it seems, most of the time. And there's just nothing, nothing available. Let's see how they run that when they run that. It's Harmon Parks, Lee and Carroll. Now they're going to... Split receivers to both sides. Eye formation now behind Vineyard. Rodriguez to tail. Nichols is the full. Giving to Rodriguez. He breaks a couple tackles. Gets across the 40 and is tackled down by enough for the first down at the 48-yard line. A breakdown in the interior of the jacket defense as he went through the line untouched and goes for 17 yards. And that's what he needed for the first, and he gets it. Great tackle by Trey Feltz as he had just broke the line of scrimmage. And they're going to bring uh, Ken Howell back in now and take... Uh, and take Jeff Scott out. So you replace a cornerback with a linebacker. Go back probably to that 6-2. That, that I got to hand it. I think the Steamboat coaching staff really felt like Friendship was going to throw the football that time, and we're not ready for the draw. First and 10 for the Tigers at their own 48-yard line. And again to Rodriguez, who stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Jilson stepping up from his forget middle it. linebacker position. No gain on the play, second and 10. Just forget it. And look, coming up off the bottom of the pile, one, two, three offensive linemen stuffed at the line of scrimmage. And needless to say, when Rodriguez is behind him, he doesn't go any further either. So really, they're not necessarily tackling Rodriguez. <laughs> He's just running into his offensive line, and that's the end of it. Well, when you watch the tight end, Johnny Swincano's come away from the line of scrimmage. I think that's a guy that's definitely going to play on the next level next year. 6'5", 221. We've already seen him catch a pass for a touchdown. He is a big specimen on the field. 
Stevenville jumps off sides again on the hard snap. Ooh, and uh, Ken Howell may not have heard the whistle as he hit. What's your whistle? I'm hearing something. Let's wait and see. It is I think dead it's false ball. Start. Yeah. It is false start again. That's why they jumped. Friendship. So there was a whistle. Three jacket defensive linemen were in the neutral zone, so you've got to think with that many going, someone had to have moved. But you're right, it was a hard count on the part of Vineyard. He pulled his own line off sides. That's a pretty good count, isn't it? <laughs> hard when count. they know the count and you can pull them off. 3.23 to go here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Stephenville 20, Wolfworth Friendship 7. Mark the ball back to the 43-yard line. This has been a game that's been very choppy because of all the penalties and turnovers. Yeah, the first quarter went really quick. And then we had a number of slowdowns there with turnovers and, as you said, penalties. And then that confusion on the kickoff took us about five minutes. Split receivers to both sides. High formation again behind Vineyard. Trey Vineyard is under center. Side and look to the far side. Giving the ball to the right side is Rodriguez. He is swarmed under by Parks. Gain of two on the play. It'll be third down and 13 for the Tigers. They're going to have to throw the football boots. That's the only thing they've got right now. Stephenville will take a timeout to conserve some clock. We'll take one with them. 20 to 7. Steve on top of friendship. Back in one minute. back third down and 13 for the Tigers at their own 45 yard line Vineyard play action rolling to the near side in some trouble makes one man miss but not the second coming in is Monk and makes the uh, sack back at the 35 he drops the football but the referee will say he was down by contact on the ground and so there is no fumble there is a flag in the backfield maybe holding it's in that area against the Tigers if it is it will be declined I think it is I think it looks like the well, it might have been Harmon that got held. Let's see. Cal Gilson was the first man yep. in there to disrupt Vineyard. It is holding against the Tigers. Steamboat declines. It will set up fourth down. They don't have Fox Sports Southwest up here in the booth. No, sir. How are we going to keep up with the SMU TCU game? Fourth down. For the Tigers, and they need about 23. Well, you got more than we can say, Grace, over right here, please. I'm, I know. <laughs> Just wanting it all, sports fan. Uh, Kendall Bryles is back deep by himself. Scroggins getting set to punt. Snap back. High, high wobbly kick will be fair caught by Bryles. Instead, he'll get away from the ball. It takes a bounce forward for friendship and then rolls forward. And then we'll be down to the 23-yard line, 31 yards on the kick, but they'll actually spot it at the 34-yard line. That's where Friendship made contact. Is that where we're going off the 31? Yes, 31 yards on the kick. Steamville begins at their own 34-yard line. Well, it was 2.16 to go. Steamville uh, would certainly like to get another one in the uh, end zone, go up by three touchdowns at the, uh, at the half. And just think, there was, you know, one fumble inside the 10. I mean, this game could already be over if Stephenville could have just held on to the football, losing the ball three times on fumbles in the uh, first half. Twins to the near side, one to the far side. One back is behind Browse. Play action now throwing out in the flats. And Bashaw will have to go to the ground and get the football because it may have been a lateral. No, they will rule it's incomplete. Straight down the line of scrimmage pass was drilled by Browse. Hit Bashaw right in the shoulder pad and bounced off. Second down. Looks like he might have turned his head upfield to see where he was going before he brought the ball in. That, uh, that'll happen. Incomplete pass brings up second down and 10. At least it does stop the clock at P12 now to go in the first down. Stephenville 20, Wolford Wolf Friendship 7. Browse is in shotgun. Twins to the far side, twins to the near side. A tight end look of Neal on the right side as well. Straight drop for Browse. Looking, looking. He's in some trouble. He'll be flushed out now. He'll throw out in the flats. Too far out of the outreached hands of Bashaw. He wanted O'Neill, who was open early, but O'Neill was open so early that he kept waiting for him to release more deep, and then he got into some coverage. I believe if Browse had hit O'Neill very quickly with the hot pass, it had easily gotten enough for the first. Boy, he did break open quick, didn't he? About the, what, about the 40-yard line? He was open which is only about five yards past the line of scrimmage. 
So it'll be third down and 10 for Stephenville. 205 to go now in the quick one for second quarter. 20 to 7. Stephenville on top. Stephenville needs to get almost to the 45 of their own. Browse and shotgun rolling to the near side. Setting up, throwing out the flats. Has O'Neill and the first down at the 46 yard line. Ooh. Boy, almost a late hit on the sideline. O'Neill made a nice grab and then was roughed up pretty good by Brian Moore. It's didn't get a very good spot, but he did get the first down. It's out to almost to the 46. Just enough for Stephenville. 10 yard reception, almost 11. They did. Did they stop the clock on out of bounds or just on the first down? Let's wait and see. Yep. Out of bounds. So the clock will stop. <laughs> Stephenville goes to the line with two backs behind Browse under center. The fullback Penny lines up now as a wing, and now the tailback Hunter comes in motion to the near side. Browse fumbles the football, but goes down and gets it himself. Now the clock will be running. How did he get what? Browse dropped the ball after he dropped on top of it, and Friendship has gotten the football. Browse was all by himself. He reached out, brought the ball underneath himself, and then lost it. That is the fourth fumble in the game. My gosh, I can't believe he didn't get that ball. Uh, I, I looked up because once I saw Browse go to his stomach and then just pull the ball in, I had no idea he would lose it from that point. There was not even anybody around him when that happened. I thought he would have blown the ball to the play dead, wouldn't you? So Friendship gets the ball at the 44-yard line of Stephenville. What a break. Stephenville has just not looked very sharp on a lot of scenarios with holding on to the football and some free snap penalties. Seema luckily though does have a 20 to 7 lead. But Friendship now with 148 remaining has the ball to Stephen the 44 yard line. Vineyard, play action, setting up, is in some trouble and he'll be sacked and back at midfield. Getting him is Carolyn Parks. And a loss of six on the play. It'll set up second down and 15 and will Seema will take a timeout. Yep, they want it. Stephen takes a timeout with 133 remaining. 20 to 7, Stephen on top of Friendship back in one minute. KSTV. Timeout taken by Stephenville was their second, I believe. Jackets have one more remaining. All right, I see the scoreboard. <laughs> Big, bold letters in front of us. Timeouts left. Vineyard under center, giving to his fullback. Monk makes the stop at the 40-yard line, a gain of about 10 on the play. It'll be third down and five upcoming. They got another player hurt. Well, why didn't Steamer take a timeout? Officials did. This is an official's timeout. I don't know. Will Stephen will take their last timeout, being it to be third down upcoming? Or will they wait till the fourth down play? Nathan Cates is hurt, and they're telling him he's got to come out because they did stop the clock. He says he's all right, and he runs out all right. But once the official stop, he's got to he's got to leave the game. Well, that helps the uh, Yellow Jackets. Third down and. Well, a long five needed, but they start the clock now, 112 and counting, and I'm sure Friendship ought to take their time. There's still 18 seconds left on the play clock, but they hustle up to the line. Attaboy. Hurry, boys, hurry. Vineyard under center. Split back behind him with an offset look. Vineyard looking to throw in over the top, almost picked off. Ooh. Fanning came up to try to make the pick over Brian Moore. It was just off his outstretched hands. And a break for Steamwell. The incomplete pass stops the clock, and Steamwell can conserve one timeout with 54 seconds remaining. Well, do they go for it on I think if you're friendship, you punt the ball. I think they're going for it. We're going to call timeout and talk about it. They will. 20 to 7, Steamwell on top, 54 seconds remaining. In the Cook Lumber second quarter, we're back in one minute. Fourth and five, the Tigers will go for it at the Stephenville 40 yard line. Straight drop for Vineyard, looking, looking. Now he's going to throw the deep ball. It's up, it's picked off at the 20 yard line and then dropped. Good. And it's probably a good thing that Bryles, who was playing free safety on the play, could not come up with the ball. He had great defense to knock it away because by him dropping the ball, Stephenville instead getting it at the 20, gets it at the 40 where the ball turns over on downs. Yeah, that was a good thing because uh, that uh, would have cost us 20 yards. I mean, you, of course, you always want to try to make a pick, but not when it's going to cost you 20 yards. 
first to 10 for the Jackets. They're on 40, 47 seconds remaining. Steamville 20, Wolf of Friendship 7. And now, what's, who's taking a timeout here? Wolford. Wolford has taken a timeout. We'll keep it right here. Well, it's an old cliche. Isn't it? Well, this is interesting. To play Friday at one o'clock. This game will be over oh, sometime around four o'clock. Boy, talk about having your weekend free all weekend, and you still have people to play on football. Everyone, yeah. I'm all for that. Well, the Jackets bring it back in now, so we're ready to play. First and 10 at their own 40-yard line. Trips to the near side, one to the far side. Browns is in shotgun with Hunter standing next to him in the backfield. By the way, this is the quarter that uh, we can give away a VCR from Red City if we hold them scoreless. So far, that's been the case. Browns giving the ball to Hunter. Hunter finding the seam across the 45 to the outside. Midfield makes a man miss. Getting it again to the outside. 45-40, 35-30, and run out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Boy, and I saw the coaching staff from Friendship just throw a clipboard down. 31-yard gain as the draw play really hurt Friendship, who had sent a lot of people back deep in pass coverage, and the draw play worked great. Yeah, and Zach made a great uh, move outside. I thought he was going to cut it up at about the 45 and decided, no, I probably need to try to get out of bounds. And when he did, he picked up a block and ran for another 15. First and 10 for the Jackets, 37 seconds remaining at the Friendship 29-yard line. Brow setting up, looking, looking, makes one man miss, and another inside the 30, and will go out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Smart move by Browse to get out of bounds quickly. This stops the clock in 30 seconds. No gain of about two to three on the play. Remember, they do have that one timeout left uh, that they can use either for uh, to set up another possible touchdown pack, uh, play or a field goal if they get if they get that close and want to get the. Uh, kick the field goal. Jackets are in field goal position because I watched Eben Nelson before the game kick two 47-yarders in pregame. Oh, yeah, he can kick from 45, and that's about where he would be right now. Trips to the near side, twins to the far side. Browse is in shotgun, the lone back in the set. Second down and seven from the 27-yard line. Snap back to Browse, setting up, looking. Throwing the deep fade pattern up for Douglas. Will go up, can't come down with it. Is it picked off? It is. Douglas may have jumped just a second early as the ball went over his head and the ball was picked off in the end zone. And so Friendship will get the ball back. Another turnover for Stephenville. That is the fifth turnover of the first half for Stephenville. Man, I tell you, that was a great sport. You were already in uh, field goal range. And uh, hmm, tough break. So Friendship will get the football back at their own 20-yard line. Boy, and you can just look at the sideline right now, Johnny. This is just a different atmosphere for Stephenville. And it kind of looks like Stephenville did in the last three games of the regular season. They had already wrapped up the district championship. The games didn't mean a tremendous amount because they already knew where they'd play in the playoffs. They just needed to finish out the season. And it kind of looks a little bit like that right now. But the defense is playing great since that first score for Friendship. Only one yard on the carry for Rodriguez. And that'll probably run out the clock. And it will. The Cook Lumber second quarter comes to an end. We go to the half. Stephen getting ready to kick off to start the third quarter. Third quarter is brought to us by Texas Bank. Harris will kick uh, deep for the Jackets. Kick is away. Deep end over end will be taken at about the 10 up to the 15, 20 across the 25, across the 30, up to the 32-yard line. And that's where the Wolfers Friendship Tigers will begin. First and 10 at their own 31. 20 to 7, Stephen on top of Friendship. And nice, nice tackle there by David Walker, by the way. I think it says something about your program. In the first half of the third round of the playoffs, if you if you can have six free snap penalties, turn the football over five times, and still have a two-touchdown lead at the half. 
think it says something about your opponent as well, but it really says something about your defense, doesn't it? First and ten for the Tigers, I would agree. Put back behind Vineyard. Play action, Vineyard looking to throw. He's hit when he releases. It is caught by Rodriguez at the 45. Makes another man miss at the 45. Going the other way, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. And run out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Stephenville defensive backs got a little bit lost on who had the football. And by the time Rodriguez made the catch, he broke several tackles and finished with 52 yards on the final of the completion. Man, he was wide open. There's no way that catch should have been made. Wide open under great pressure. And you got to give Vineyard uh, his dues on that one because he stood in there and took a couple of big licks. And then, as you said, Moore was just wide open. Split receivers to both sides, the eye formation. With Vineyard under center, Stephenville has been hurt by the pass today. Giving the ball to Rodriguez, coming to the near side, escapes one tackle, not the second, gets down to about the 12 to 13, a gain of about four on the play. Looks like Harmon had a beat on him back at 16. Somehow or another, Rodriguez just, uh, just squirted through and got all the way down to, what, the 13, almost the 12-yard line. Good pickup. Yeah, four yards. It's second down and six, just outside the 12-yard line of Stephenville. Just underway here in the Texas Bank third quarter. Kirby splits to the far side, more to the near side. The backs are split and offset behind Vineyard under center. Inside trap handoff goes to the fullback who breaks a couple tackles the line of scrimmage and then gets down to the 10 to the nine yard line. A pickup of another four yards and it will be third down at two. Another player is I down. Think, I think that's Cross again, isn't it? Yeah. Or Cates rather, number 74. Nathan Cates. We did see him leave the game earlier and Boy, this is a weird looking penalty because he's, uh, excuse me, injury because he's rolled up on his stomach. Yeah, he's uh, he's just hurting. Boy, now they roll him over on his back and. Boots, I mean, how big would this be if uh, for friendship, if they come out, take the opening kickoff in the second half, score, kick the extra point, only be down six. Remember Stephenville on their third touchdown, went for two and did not make it kind of fitting the way the game has gone so far that uh, that would occur. Boy, the uh, the pass defense is going to have to really batten down as we go further into the playoffs. There's, there's some teams that are going to start seeing this and go, well, you can't really run against them, but you can pass a little bit against them. And there's a team playing in the very next game that if they get that far could cause some challenges. Coppell, who will throw the ball probably 30 times a contest. Stephenville only giving up on average 110 yards passing uh, this year. They're pretty close to that right now. 107 yards passing in the game so far for Vineyard. Third down and two for the Tigers at the Stephenville nine yard line. High formation this time behind Vineyard. Nichols is the full, Rodriguez is the tailback. Giving the ball to Rodriguez, busts through for the first down and gets to the six yard line. Three yards on the carry, and it is enough for the first. Big hit by Feltz, but after, like you said, after he had enough for the first down, just barely, by about a half a yard, he made the first down, so it'll be first and goal at the six. 20 to seven, Stephen Will on top of friendship. 10-20 to go here in the Texas Bank third quarter. Well, the defense is gonna have to step up and make another big play, it looks like. First and goal to go just outside the six yard line for the Tigers. They go with that extra linebacker, take uh, Scott out, put uh, Ken Howe in, and they'll go with a six man front. High formation again behind Vineyard, double tight end look. Giving to Nichols the fullback. He stood up at the line of scrimmage, no gain. It'll be second down and goal from the six. Cal Gilson, middle linebacker, filling first for the Jackets. Well, they're going to. They're probably going to have to do some kind of play action pass. Yep. I have a feeling the only way the Tigers feel like they could probably get the ball into the end zone. And, you know, talking to their broadcast team, they said they love to run between the tackles. Well, they've had absolutely no success between the tackles the tonight. Big, the big tight end, Johnny Swinconos, comes out of the game. Wishbone look. <laughs> Four people in the backfield. They'll shift out of it with twins on the near side, one to the far side. Now one man in motion going toward the far side. In some trouble, throwing out in the flats. Caught, touchdown. A great executed play on the part of the Tigers who really caught the Jackets off guard. But hold on, a flag is down at the six. 
Old everything. This one may be coming back. Boy, that's a bad break for friendship if it is. It yep. is against the Tigers. Boy, what a wonderfully executed play. It is oh. holding against the Tigers. They had four people in the backfield. They shifted out of it with twins coming to the near side, one receiver to the far side. The one oh. back left went in motion toward the single receiver. That receiver came out yeah. post pattern, and he simply flared out the flats was open the pass was caught for the touchdown but holding against the Tigers will move the ball all the way back to the 16 yard line well and they just uh, Stephenville didn't go with the guy in motion uh, it was a little bit of a mix up there a memo to the friendship band uh, they penalty no touchdown <laughs> I got you can't stop right in the middle of a fight song yeah. can you <laughs> that'd be a little bit second and goal to go from the 16 for the Tigers Back a little bit more traditional look with the split backs. Giving the ball inside. No check at the play action. Pass to Rodriguez. Caught at the five. Touchdown. Stephenville really bit on the inside handoff. Both backers, Harris and Monk, stepped up, and Rodriguez went past both of them. Catches the ball. Touchdown. Friendship, and they have pulled down within seven with the extra point upcoming. This game is getting to have an eerie feel to it, isn't it, Boots? Well, and we've watched a lot of football for Stephenville through the years, and I'm not homering out here when I say this is a Stephenville team that should be up by about 28 to 30 points right now. Oh, yeah. Easy. Should be at least 35 to now 7 right now. Friendship getting set for the extra point. Snap back. Hold down. Kick is on the way. It is up, and it is good. 9-10 to go in the Texas Bank third quarter. Tigers of friendship getting set to kick off. <laughs> that last scoring drive. Yes, the last scoring summary. Uh, six plays, 69 yards. Only took two minutes and 42 seconds. Rodriguez on that 16-yard pass from uh, Vineyard. Uh, brought to you by Lupis on the uh, South Lucas studio. Scroggins kick. High, high pooch. End over end will be fair caught. At the 31-yard uh, line by, by uh, Feltz, O'Neill fair caught signal. Feltz jumped in front of him and returned the ball. That's a penalty against Stephenville for having one player signal the fair catch and another one stepping in front of him. And well, he, didn't, he didn't know that he'd fair caught it. Well, I, I agree that he had no idea, and that's not really his fault, but I think I that is the call. Yeah, you're right. I'm just saying, you know, credit Feltz for going and getting the ball. It's a delay of game against Feltz. I mean, he only delayed the game by three seconds, but he didn't mean to. So Steam will begin first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Well, they better go score right here. Split receivers to both sides, eye formation. Behind Browell's wingback look as the tailback Hunter comes in motion to the near side. Giving the ball, the ball is fumbled. And no, at the 27-yard line, not sure has it yet. The exchange between Browse and Haney has been awful today. I don't think Browse wanted to hand it off. Friendship got it. Friendship gets the football at the 27-yard line. That is the sixth turnover of the game. Derek Haney's upset about something. Wait a minute. Stephenville got the ball back. Did they point the wrong yeah. direction? Yeah, Stephenville got the ball back. The official pointed in the wrong direction. It will be Stephenville ball second yeah. down. Derek Haney came off and he said, wait a minute, I had the football. Don't tell me it was their ball. Well, that still is the, uh, that is the fifth fumble of the game. Stephenville was lucky to get that one back. Ooh. Second down and 10 for the Jackets. Browse is in shotgun. Well, Sixth fumble of the game, excuse me. Browse throwing the deep ball. Has a receiver, it's Avalos, and it's almost picked off. The ball was underthrown. Good coverage on the play by Ryan Kirby. That was good coverage. That's a play we've seen earlier in the year. Uh, in fact, uh, was it the Everman game, I think, the first play of the game? Right. That was a play they run to the far side and throw back to Avalos streaking down the sideline. Good coverage, and the ball was underthrown a little bit. Browse tried to air that one out about 50 yards. It's third down and 10. Jeez, this is a big, big series right here. Uh, Friendship has all the momentum going for him right now. Mm, Browse under center. Play action. Setting up, still looking across the middle. Under thrown. The ball is intended for Avalos. Never saw it. He never turned around in time to see the pass. Be fourth down, the Jackets will have to punt. And I, I'm telling you, Steamwell fans, this is a team that's probably under normal circumstances 
a four to five touchdown underdog to Stephenville, who is playing right when the Jackets, who the Jackets right now just are not playing with any sense of, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. They're just for. out of sync, that's all it is. It's just a bad game. O'Neill punts this one up in the air and it'll be fair caught at the 48 yard line. Only 26 yards on the kick from O'Neill, who's not happy with himself. And why shouldn't the special teams not be as efficient as it has in the past? Everything else is having a tough time right now. And I think you're relying on your defense to keep you in the ball game until you can get another big break. Well, they're going to get it right here. 8.03 to go in the third quarter, and they're going to get it. Steve well, that, that extra point really looming big right now, isn't it? That Stephenville went for two and didn't make it. I think at the time, as easy as Stephenville was moving the ball, the coaching staff felt like that point would not be that important, and they would show a two-point play to some other scouts. Well, right now, it's looming. First and 10 for the Tigers at their own 47-yard line. Giving the ball to Rodriguez, getting into jacket territory all the way down to the 42-yard line, a pickup of 10 and close to a first down. And Ooh, this is, this, a, this is a Stephenville team that is resting on their heels right now, and friendship is really feeling like they ought to be in this game. Well, they should when you give up six, <laughs> six turnovers, five turnovers. You should be in the game, and they are. Six fumbles in the game for Stephenville and one interception. They will measure to find out if Rodriguez did officially get 10 yards, and he did. First down for the Tigers at the Stephenville 42-yard line. Well, one of the things that uh, Coach Browse talks about is character and poise. You're going to find out what kind of character and poise this, uh, this football team has right now. Because this is the drive that's going to determine it right here. First and 10 for the Tigers at the 42-yard line of Stephenville. High formation behind Vineyard. Vineyard with Rodriguez to fill back. Nichols to pull. It is going to Rodriguez, and he's stuffed up behind the line of scrimmage by Herman, I believe, as well as Harris getting in there. It'll be second down and 10 to 11. Well, yeah, I was going to say, if Steamville can stop them here, they would obviously punt from this point of the field here, Boots, because they'd want to try to pin us back. Stevo can do that and then go score. Uh, the game would be well in hand then, and uh, they would have this, uh, you know, they would be where they wanted to be. But that's a lot. That's two really big ifs right now. All right, formation behind Vineyard. Vineyard play action rolling to the near side, looking for his big tight end. Bubble Smith throw across the middle, and it's picked off by Gunn. Gunn makes the pick at the 29-yard line on a diving catch. And Stigma will take over at their own 29-yard line. I told you the defense was going to make a play on this series. You, just, you can just feel that they, they, they felt the urgency they were going to have to step up and do something. Now the offense has got to do their part. Second pick in the game by the senior free safety, Brady Gunn. Stigma on top, 20-14 to 14 at the 648 mark of the Texas Bank third quarter. By the way, when Friendship scored a moment ago, Stephenville on the season had only given up 14 points in the third quarter. Now hmm. 21. Pitch out to Hunter. Hunter looking to cut up and stay. Gets to the outside. 35, 40, 45, 50. One man to beat. 40, 30, 20. He smokes him. 10, 5, touchdown. 71 yards. And Stephenville has extended now. 26 to 14 with the extra point upcoming. Well, those were two pretty big ifs, weren't they? <laughs> I just said, how about that? Well, yeah, a turnover, one play goes 71 yards. Bang. Wake up, golf. That's what the that's what the offense needed. Boy, Ryan Kirby, the cornerback with a lot of speed, had a huge angle How on, fast is that? on Hunter, and Hunter just made all of it up and then didn't even get close to it. Well, they almost gotta go for two now, don't they? I would think so to make it an even 28 to 14. Browns just trot out onto yep. the field, so the Jackets will go for two. Yeah, you almost have to now. Good grief, how quick is he? He got around the corner, like you said. Kirby had the angle on him. Not a problem. All right, Bryles with two backs behind him, a wing back look, and a split receiver to the near side. Bryles under center, keeping the ball in the option, and he will be stacked up at the one-yard line. Check good. that. It was given to Haney, and he gets over for the score. The two-point conversion is good.
Welcome back, Texas Stadium. John Hollinger, Boots Elliott. Johnny, last scoring drive. Well, how fast is he? It took him 10 seconds to go 71 yards. One play, and nine or ten. So that means he's about a 4 5 40, right? Something in that range. <laughs> All right. That scoring summary brought to you by Barnes and McCuff. And the two point was good, and that's even bigger. How about that? Makes it an even 14 point lead for Stephenville. Ryan Harris approaches. End over end kick will be returned by Brandon Scroggins at the 5, up to the 10, 15, across the 20, 25, 30, to the outside, 40. One man to beat Harris, who grills him at midfield. Who, who is not your usual kicker. Right. He's a right. linebacker. Harris, your kicker, is also your outside linebacker with good speed, and Friendship gets a great field position at the 50-yard line after the 45-yard return. Man. Well, they're just not going to let up, are they, Boots? First and 10 for the Tigers at that point. 6.23 to go in the Texas Bank third quarter, 28 to 14. Stephenville on top of Friendship. Zach Hunter now six carries, 112 yards. Vineyard under center, eye formation behind him. Giving the ball to Rodriguez, who is stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. Jilson, as well as Harris and Gordon Carroll. And Harmon in there, and Scott Lee for the well, just the whole defensive front. Just give it that. Yeah, let's just uh, let's go with that. Second and eleven for the Tigers. Zach Hunter now 1,370 yards rushing on the season, and let's see. That puts him at 100 yards a game. This is the 13th game of the season. 18 touchdowns rushing. High formation again behind Vineyard. Stephenville jumps off sides. Were they drawn? Yeah. We'll wait and see. Scott Lee a little quick in here. Doing the old bear crawls, what it looked like. Scott Lee in the uh, 50 defense, when they have a nose guard, he moves to that position. It is dead ball offsides against Stephenville. So, reward friendship five yards on that penalty. Well, did the spookiness leave for you, Johnny? Not yet. All right. I think one more and it will be. Just eerie feeling, wasn't it? I mean, the way this thing, you keep turning it over and, and you know, Shoot yourself in the foot. Take it down and five, make it six for the Tigers. Same formation with split receivers to both sides in the eye, giving it straight up the middle up on the tailback, going to the 45, and that's it. No gain. The third down and ten. You know, Boots. One thing you learn about in high school football in the playoffs: the best team does not always win. And so you, that's why you were saying like one of the things Coach Browns was talking about earlier in the week. You know, guys, just because you're the best team doesn't mean they're just going to not show up at Texas Stadium come Friday afternoon. You're going to have to play them. You're going to have to play them four quarters. These guys, they have nothing to lose. Friendship. It's, you know, they, if they walk away from this game losers, people are going to say, well, they were supposed to. And they played a great game. And they have played a great game. Third and five for the Tigers at the 45. Play action. Setting up his vineyard. Throwing. In some trouble. Being flushed by Parks. Now we'll tuck it under and we'll get the first down at the 39-yard line. A couple of good pump fakes to hold the defense so he could get around the corner and get just inside the Steamville 40-yard line. You're right. That's enough for the first down. Vineyard play action to the near side. Was flushed this back the opposite way by Parks, who chased him all the way across the field. And he did pump fake a couple times to freeze the backers to allow him to get to the corner and get the first down. Ball is spotted at the 39 of Stephenville. 4.37 to go here in the third quarter. 28-14, Stephenville on top of Friendship. Under center is Vineyard giving the ball to Nichols. Nichols will get to the 37-yard line. Gain of about two. It's going to be second down and eight. The clock continues to roll at the 429 mark. I know Steve's down there uh, on the sideline. Hey, um, Steve, it seems like the fans are really trying to get into this game, and they just, they just have a hard time, don't they? Yeah, they really are. I mean, these are the best fans in the state of Texas, but it's just been one of those games. I think Boots described it as choppy early on. There's just been no flow. Stephenville's never been able to grab the momentum, but here are the great fan fans now coming to their feet on second and seven. Under center is Vineyard. I'll come back to that point in one minute. Setting up is Vineyard. In a lot of trouble. He'll be sacked. The strong safety blitz gets him again as Felt sacks him all the way back at the top of the blue star on the 50-yard line. A loss of about 12. He never saw it coming, did he? Never saw it coming. 
So it'll be third down and long. You know where else it's bad when you walk up somewhere and you ask, well, how's it going? And they say, well, it's choppy. Yeah. On the lake? No. Uh, in Vegas? Oh, at yeah. At the table? Oh, yeah. Good boy. <laughs> Move to the next table. <laughs> how's it going? Well, it's been choppy. Whoop. I'll go somewhere else. Is that like a dice, man? I think it is. <laughs> third down and 20. I'm thinking of fishing, right? <laughs> choppy water. Fingered under center. Play action, throwing across the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, and he would have been close to the yardage needed for the first. And a late flag comes down as Steve will be penalized with hitting Brian Moore after the play was over. And boy, that's a little oh, bit ticky tack. Come on. This will be a automatic first down, oh. I'm sure, because this will be the personal foul of the dead ball variety. It is dead ball. Personal oh, foul boy. against Stevenville, hitting Moore after he dropped the football. That's pretty weak. Pretty weak. So that'll move the ball all the way inside the 30-yard line. Well, check that. They'll move it from the actual line of scrimmage, and it'll be down to the 33-yard line, but it is an automatic first down, even though that, even with all the 15 yards, was not enough for the first. Coach Browse is going, what? Give me a number. I, I want to know why was that a penalty? I mean, they did run up to him. It looked to me like they were just talking to him. Well, not only that, they did hit him, but it's one of those situations they hit him and they grabbed him before he yeah. hit the ground to exactly. keep him up and say, you know, I was trying to ease back. So it's first and 10. They Flags jump. down, I believe, the right side of the 55. Line, line from Friendship did jump. Who I don't know who that is. <laughs> He's not on, the, not on the roster. On any one of our rosters. Well, unless it's uh, Davidson and they just change the number the the Well, there's five of the 15. Ball ball takes them all back to Unfortunately, it would have been it's still first down. It would have been third real long. 28 to 14, Stephen Bell on top of Friendship. First and 15 out at the 39 yard line. Vineyard under center. Play action, throwing the ball's tipped up in the air and it's almost intercepted, but it hits the ground. Gordon Carroll had the best chance of trying to uh, pick that one off after the tip by Feltz coming in. It'll be second down and 15. Boy, Feltz has just had a, he's had a clear road to the quarterback, hasn't he? Every, every time he's come, he's come untouched. Two blitzes and now a deflected pass. 308 here in the Texas Bank third quarter. It's been a long quarter. Oh, it's been a lot of stuff happening. Boy, you can just feel how this, this Porter's just dragging on. Vineyard again under center with Rodriguez and Nichols behind him. Two split receivers to the far side. Giving the ball to Nichols, who is stacked up at the 36-yard line. Check that. It's not Nichols. It's Jerry McClendon, number six. A gain of about three, and it'll be third down and 13. Number 44, Scott Lee. Mark. Ball at the 36 Excuse me, Mark McClendon. Third down and 13. And Another third and long for the Tigers, and they've had some success on play action pass, and they've had success in the same scenario with the draw. They haven't gone to the tight end in a while. Let's see if maybe they go to him. Swincondos is lined up to the near side. Vineyard is under center, two backs behind him. Play action, looking to throw, and in some trouble is Vineyard. Now he'll throw out in the middle. It's over the head of the intended receiver, and he was open at the first down marker, Brian Moore, Ooh. but the pass was over his head. And lucky for Stevenville, Brian Moore's only 5'8". Well, they'll go for it on fourth down, I'm sure. He's probably 5'10", and it's a first down for the Tigers. Well, they will punt. You know, you know they have, the Stevenville uh, secondary has really lost track of that guy today. I mean, he just went down there and sat in, a, in an open spot in the zone, and I thought Vineyard had found him. So it's fourth down and 13, now an official timeout. Any particular reason? Boy, and this is as quiet as I've ever heard Texas Stadium for as many people in here as there are. When did they call an official stand out? Is there, oh, it must be uh, an equipment. Is that 68 that's leaving? There's they, probably, probably 10,000 in here. They're going to go for and it. And it was quiet. No, they're going to punt. Watch so, for a fake here. Brandon Scroggins is back to punt. No jackets go deep. All 11 defenders up on the line practically are in that area to make sure it is not a fake. They do punch. End over end kick will hit at the 10, take a big hop, and will die at about the six yard line. So an effective punch of 30 yards 
for the Friendship Tigers. Stephen will get the ball back, leading 28-14 at the 210 mark of the Texas Bank third quarter. They said they touched it up at the eight, so they moved it back up to the eight. So that's that's good. We'll take a couple of yards. Now Stephenville can go score game over. And see, you've said that a few times. We haven't been able to quite do that. <laughs> it will be if they score. All right. It's 28-14. They go up 35-14 the way this defense is playing. That should do it. Browse is under center, two backs behind him, one split receiver to the near side. Pitch is to Hunter. Hunter cuts up and is hit at the line of scrimmage, and he will not make anything as a big defensive play is made by Robert Cabrera, uh, Caballero, 214-pound senior. 6'3", 214-pound defensive end. Boy, I tell you, that was a big hit right there. He just knocked Zach back. Second down and 10 for the Jackets. Well, you got to be careful down here in this end of the field. Twins to the near side, one receiver far side. Now the one back, Matkins, goes in motion. He's delayed at the line of scrimmage. Can't get away, and Bross just throws that one away. Ooh, Matkins looked like he wanted to escape, but he was held at the line of scrimmage, and Bross just got rid of that one. He got rid of it while he was in the... Uh, in the end zone, boy, if he gets called for grounding in which there were no balls around, no receivers around, is that an automatic safety? Yep. And he almost, uh, that was almost an interception there. He threw it at, at the feet of uh, the defender. But boy, that was the, that was the closest guy there was uh, 16, David Thomas. Third down and 10 for the Jackets. The Jackets will send four receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Browse is under center. Great drop for Browse. Now throwing in the flats, and the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. It'll be fourth and ten, and the Jackets on that drive get zero yards, so they will be forced to punt. So I guess that really wouldn't be a drive, would it? Zero yards. What are we looking for? <laughs> we, we, have a, we have a score from the Astrodome in the first quarter. It is Lamarck, 13, Hallsville, 6. 13 to 6, Lamarck on top. O'Neill will have to punt from his own end zone. Snap back to him. Kick is away. End over end kick will be taken by Moore at the 43 yard line. 40 inside the 35, finds the seam 30, cuts back 25 20. He's going to score. 15 10, 5, touchdown. Stiegel directly punted to him. He returns it 43 yards. And Friendship has pulled now within eight, the extra point upcoming. Oh, these guys just won't go away. Boy, another breakdown on the part of the Stephenville football team today. Stephenville has not had a special teams touchdown scored against them this year. I'm just sitting here thinking, when was the last time I saw Stephenville play this bad? And I, I thought of it, but I'm not going to mention it. I think I could probably tell you when that is. Getting set for the extra point. Snap back, hold down, kick is on the way. It is up and it is good. 110 to go in the Texas Bank third quarter. Especially an eerie game. John Hollinger and I have broken out the rollades up in the booth. <laughs> Man, 42-yard punt return. Took eight seconds. Scoring summary brought to you by Walmart Vision Center. High end over end. Kick will be taken by O'Neill up at the 30. Tries to get to the outside to the 35, and he's run out of bounds right there. First and 10, Steamville at the 35-yard line. And boy, friendship sideline and the friendship fans are just having a ball right now. Everything's working in their favor. Good news is... When he got tackled out of bounds, I just happened to look up to see how much time was left. There was a minute and one second. They ran eight more seconds off the clock. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, 53 seconds remaining. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate it. We need this clock to go away. <laughs> Twins to the far side, one to the near side. Browse under center, one back behind him. First and 10 throw on 35. Steve 28, for friendship 21. Browse inside trap handout. No check that he keeps it himself. After faking the inside trap, he will get a gain of one, and that will be it. Boy, and friendship is fired up. And you look at Stephen Bell, Stephen Bell's hands on hips. 
It's just a different scenario for this Jacket team than we've seen in a long time. Let's see, are they going to have to run, run another play? Yes, they will have to run another play. 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Oh, I'm ready for this quarter to be over. Yeah. Second and nine for the Jackets. Two backs behind Bryles. Split receivers to both sides. Haney lines up as a wing back on the right. Now Hunter goes in motion. Bryles throwing the deep ball for Bashaw. It's over his head. Incomplete. It'll be third down and nine coming up. That play is not there. It is not there today. It's, uh, they're playing it too deep back there. The corner is able to run with the Jacket receivers. And even if the corner is beat, you're right. They're rolling a safety over. It's a, it's a zone defensive coverage, and there's just no room for the deep ball. No look now, but it's third and nine. You're still in the third quarter, and only up by one score now. We need Derek Haney to bust one up the middle about 15 yards. Of course, that exchange has not been real smooth today, has it? 0 for 5 in his last five attempts is Kendall in the game. He is 9 out of 16 for 152 yards. Boy, a lot of confusion oh, on the behalf of Steamville, and they must call a timeout. 28-21, Steamville back in one minute for KSTV. Twins to the near side, one receiver far side. Browse is in shotgun. Third down and nine for the Jackets at their own 35-yard line. Douglas coming in motion. Browse on a keeper by himself to the 35, across the 40, making another man miss and gets the first down at the 46-yard line. Boy, you knew that play was coming, didn't if you? If it all fell, put Kendall in shotgun and let him make something happen running the football. And we've seen that in some big games this year when the passing attack has had some trouble getting downfield. You go through the scenario of letting Kendall just make things happen from shotgun. Give him 10, he needed nine. That will bring the third quarter Finally. brought to us by Texas Bank to a merciful ending. Stephenville 28, Wolf of Friendship 21. We're back in one minute on KSTV. First to 10 for the Jackets out at their own 46-yard line. Browles under center. Play action. Browles rolling to the near side. He's in some trouble. We'll step up. And get away at the 45, across midfield, 45, cuts to the outside, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, Tyrell goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line. And another big play for Kendall Bryles. On the first play of the Techstar Ford fourth quarter, he goes 34 yards, and Stephenville's back in business at the 20-yard line of over Friendship. Stephenville, 28. Friendship, 21. Last two plays, Kendall Bryles, 44 yards rushing. He's got outside the containment. He wanted to throw the football, and they wouldn't let him. First and 10 for the Jackets again. Riles under center. Pitch back to the outside is Hunter. Hunter trying to get to the outside. He's in some trouble. Stiff arms makes one miss, but not another. Goes out of bounds at the 19-yard line. I think you'd like to have seen Zach at about the 22 cut that up inside. Well, he wanted to, and his block, was, it took uh, just a second for his block, and they, they, didn't get the, uh, they didn't get him kicked out or in, either one, and so he just took what was there. Gain of two on the play, second down and eight. 11.41 to go here in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Steamboat Finally. 28. <laughs> Finally, we're in the Wolf fourth quarter. Friendship 21. Browns is under center. Eye formation behind him. Wing back look on the right side. Mackins is at a wing. Now the tailback is Hunter. Comes in motion to the near side. Giving the ball straight ahead to Haney. Haney will go forth for one yard. It'll be third down and seven. Well, you need another score here, that's for sure. Boy, I don't even think a field goal's enough right now, the way this game's working out. Stephenville in the third quarter this year, the entire year has only given up 14 points. They give up 14 points today in the third quarter as well. Only given up 51 points in the fourth quarter all year. Third down and seven. It's not even five points a quarter. Browns in shotgun. Four receivers to the near side. Looking in some trouble. We'll throw out in the flats and it's almost picked off. A great defensive move made by Davis Thomas to knock the ball away from O'Neill. It's now fourth and seven and even Nelson, the kicker, trots out onto the field. He had, uh, he had O'Neill early and for some reason didn't throw it. Waited just a few seconds and then 
And then, like you said, it was too late. Just a great uh, play by Thomas. Boy, Browse has not had a lot of time to throw the football no. in this game. That front four has been getting a good rush here in the second half. Nelson will spot the tee at the 25, a 35-yard attempt upcoming. For the junior kicker, Patronus will have the hold. Doty has the snap. Snap back, hold down. Kick is on the way. This one has plenty of leg. It is up, and it is good. That field goal gives Stephenville a 10-point lead. Johnny's scoring drive. Eight plays, 66 yards. Only took 218 off the clock, though. Nelson on that 35-yard field goal. That makes it 31-21 Stephenville. That scoring summary brought to you by Walmart Vision Center. Virgin is in the game to kick. He'll hit the high pooch kick to the near sideline. It will be taken at the 32-yard line and then tackled at the 34. That's where the Tigers will begin first and 10 at their own 34-yard line. Walker again on the tackle along with Feltz. That's, uh, that's good coverage. Boy, the Stephenville passing game has had a tough time here lately executing. At one point in the game, Kendall was 8 out of 9. Since that point, he is now 9 out of 17. Wow. 1 of 8. First and 10 for the Tigers at their own 34-yard line. Stephenville on top 31-21. A lot of that has to do with that front four for uh, Friendship. Getting, really picked up the game. Sure, getting pressure inside. Twins to the far side, one receiver near side. First three receiver set we've seen in a while for Friendship. Handing the ball to Rodriguez. Breaks the line initially, Ooh. but then his Harris is there to fill at the 39, a gain of five. Boy, a good tackle by Harris. If he doesn't make that one, he runs for a while. Second down, five for the Tigers. 10-26 and counting in the Techstar fourth, fourth quarter. Those relays are helpful, aren't they? Boy, they were needed, too. Twins to the far <laughs> side again, one to the near side. Eye formation again behind Vineyard. Boy, the Tigers just do a great job of slowing the game down. Hand off to Rodriguez. He stopped up behind the line of scrimmage. It was not Rodriguez. New back in the backfield, number 33, Barry McCormick. A loss of about one, 33. Let's make sure that is as he goes back to the backfield. Yep, that's who it was. So it'll be uh, third down and about six needed for the Tigers. Yeah, they brought him in real late. Uh, I don't know if there was something wrong with... Uh, well, Nichols is coming back out onto the field, the normal fullback. No, it's not either. That's not Nichols coming out. That's uh, Ryan Kirby, one of the receivers. So you're right, Nichols is out of the game right now. Third down and six for the Tigers inside their own 39-yard line. Split backs now and offset behind Vineyard. Straight drop for him. Looking to throw back across the middle. The ball is almost diving catch made, but is not. Slightly behind the intended receiver. Nice route that time by uh, by Moore, Barry Moore, but ball was thrown just a little bit behind him up at the midfield. It had been plenty for the first down. Seville playing kind of soft there. Was uh, was that uh, Scott? Yeah, Jeff Scott defending. Brian Moore is one of the receivers we've seen several times for friendship. Quarterback Vineyard enjoys throwing the slant pattern, and we've seen them run that a lot today. So having to punt is Brandon Scroggins. Back deep by himself is Kendall Browns at his own 30-yard line. Snap back to Scroggins. Punt is away. High, high, booming, spiraling kick that will be signaled a fair catch by Browns, but he will let it go, and it bounces inside the 20 and goes out of bounds at the 19-yard line. 42 yards on the kick. Scroggins a very... He gets great hang time, yes. doesn't he? No chance of Very effective though. kicker. 12 minutes to go up in Colorado, Nebraska on top, 24 to three is still. Well, let's go down to, uh, let's go down to Steve Ross down there on the sideline. Boy, you know, we talked about this having an eerie feel to it. Nothing's really changed, has it, Steve? Oh, never mind. We'll go to you here in just a minute, Steve. First and 10 for Stephenville. Browse under center, giving the ball to Hunter. Finds a little bit of a seam. Trips forward out to the 24-yard line, a gain of about four yards. We'll go to Steve Ross now. And Stevie, it's really quiet down on the sideline, isn't it? 
it's been quiet on the sideline, but you really have to give those Can fans credit. They have not been taken out of this game like I know Friendship hoped they would, and Friendship said every opportunity to seize the momentum and really get the upper hand in this game, but it's just been a case where Stephenville just kept grinding it out, and they've overcome mistakes, and really, you look at the players on the bench, you'd never know they're up 10. Second down and six for the Jackets. Browse is in shotgun formation. Snap back to him. Inside trap handoff to Hunter. Hunter across the 25, keeps his feet, and gets out to the 28-yard line, about a yard short of the first down marker to be third and one. That game in the Astrodome has now gone to halftime. Same score, Lamarck 13, Hallsville 6. Well, the uh, defending small school runner-up having some trouble today as well. Hey, you know, somebody, you know, somebody asked me this week, is this friendship team any good? I don't know. They're in the third round of the playoffs. <laughs> That's all you can say. They're all good when you get to this level. Steve Mull, uh, with a win today, takes on the winner of Wichita Falls and Canyon. Hand off to Skywalker, getting very mm. close to the yardage needed for the first, and he didn't get a very good spot by the far. I don't think he got it. This will be very close to the yardage needed. Canyon, one of the schools playing... Another Friendship good. did beat Canyon in this year. Boyd is not that good a spot. Actually, spotted it's not, it. actually, it's not bad. <laughs> it's a little bit short, isn't it? Well, I don't think he got the first down. I don't either. Um, that's a game that'll be played tomorrow evening, right? In, in, which, five, 530, 530, in Wichita Falls. Wichita Falls won the home and home flip. Steamwell gets the first down by the nose of the football. I guess it was a good spot. Boy, we just don't have the best of angles, I'm guessing, from right here. I guess you're right. <laughs> we pretty much missed that one. 7.36 to go in the Techstar fourth, fourth quarter. Signal 31, Wolford Friendship 21. Boy, this is this is uh, one of those one of those drives where you just got to milk the clock a little bit here, Boots. Takes time off the clock. Take three or four minutes off, if nothing else. Well, Signal did this last week for the most of the game. The power running attack growls is under center. Kendall fumbles the football again, but goes down and gets it. That is now the seventh fumble in the game for Stephenville. They have lost five of them. That looked to me like he just pulled out early. Boy, and a lot of the fumbles have been in the exchange between center and quarterback. And this is not an inexperienced quarterback-center combination. Van Haddam and Browse have been together all year. Second down and 12 for Stephenville. Well, do you throw it now or do you keep running the football? I think you got to work on opening up the field. Stephenville is just, and, and Art told me that before the game, he said, we've got to open up the field today. and has really not been able to do that. Second and 12. Inside trap handoff to Hunter. Finds the scene, 35. Busts his way out to the 40. Flags down. It is enough for the first down, but this is holding and it is coming back. Oh, man, what a, <laughs> what a lick Hunter put on the defender. He might be a little woozy is holding against Stephenville. Stephenville is now up to 12 penalties, excuse me, 11 penalties and 80 yards. So move the ball all the way back inside the 18 to the 18 yard line and it's second down and I think Zach's a little shook up. Well, he took a big hit at the end of the play. Trips to the near side, twins to the far side. Browse is in shotgun. They know how to look, so you expect Steve Mill to open it up now. Snap back. Quickly throwing out the flats. Has Mackins, and he's run over at the 15-yard line. Friendship is completely selling out on coming up immediately, and that is a pass completion that it's a loss of three yards. And Mackins comes up first. He took a shot and looked like right in the ribs. Third down, 23. Is Zach back in yet? So. Third down and 23 to go. Boy, as hard as this game has been to watch, it's hard to call the way this game is going so far as well. Browse is under center, third and 23 from his own 15. Browse rolling to the near side. Looking to throw, he's in some trouble and he's almost sacked. Avoids one man, then avoids another, gets to the 10, makes a move to the outside, keeps his feet and gets to the 16-yard line, all the way back to the line of scrimmage. Browse was almost sacked at the five. Clock continues to roll with 5-14 and counting. Steam leading 31 to 21. Two good tackles in a row there by 44. Heath Fries. 
Whether you like it or not, you got fries on that series. Super size. Yes, O'Neill is back to punt for Stephenville. I believe third punt of the game it is. That's another sign of how it's going for the Stephenville offense, having to punt three times in a game. This time punting away from Moore, a good punt by O'Neill will go dead at the 42-yard line. 43 yards on that kick. So that's where the Friendship Tigers begin at their own 42-yard line. 4.34 to go in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Steve 31, 21 for Wolfram Friendship. Well, the offensive line comes and uh, sits down on the bench. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of talk from the coaching staff. Boy, this is just a workman's like effort when nothing is going your way. Defense called upon again. Points to the near side. One receiver far side. NI formation with Vineyard under center. Play action. Vineyard looking to throw out the flat. Has his man caught. 45 across midfield and run out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Making the catch was Mark McClendon. He was the back in the backfield. It was fake to him, and then the backers were a little slow on coverage. The reason he got the first down, a gain of 10 on the play. First and 10 at the Stevenville 48. I, uh, I'm looking for Hunter. I don't see him. I guess he's okay. Twins to the near side, one receiver far side. High formation again. This time given to the fullback and in the open. 40, 45, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Barry McCormick with a touchdown pulls the Friendship Tigers within four with the extra point of coming at the 418 mark. Oh boy. This one is not over yet, brother. How big is that field goal a little bit ago? Big enough to be the difference in the game right now. Getting ready for the extra point for the Tigers. Chad Mandrel. Snap back, hold down, kick is on the way. It is up and it is good. 4.18 to go in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Stephen 31, Wolford Friendship 28. Back in one minute on KSTV. Friendship getting set to kick off, and once Steve gets the ball after the kickoff, can you say hammer time? Hey, it better be. Two plays, 58 yards, only took 15 or 16 seconds. That's scoring summary brought to you by Farm Bureau. Mandrill getting set for the kick. High end over end pooch kick that will be fair caught by Feltz at the 25 yard line. Yeah, we'll see. And it'll be first and 10 for the Jackets at 25. And what I say by hammer time. Ooh. I have a feeling the Jacket offense will just get behind their big offensive line and try to take a bunch of this clock and move the ball down the field and get this one out of reach. We don't need any more second and nine. And we don't need any more turnovers. Stephenville better do one of two things here. Either go score or not give Friendship the ball back. For the rest of the game. Yep. Friendship does have all three of their timeouts. 4-12 remaining in the Tech Star. Ford, fourth quarter. Stephen 31. Friendship, 28. Riles under center. Trips to the near side. One receiver far side. Inside handoff to Hunter. Hunter across the 30. It's almost the 31. They'll stay his knee down at 30. A gain of five. Run, clock, run. We're now under four minutes to go in the contest. Boy, that airy feeling just never went away today, did no. it? looking down at the coaches from Friendship, and they're all bouncing up and down in the booth. I mean, they know they're in this football game, and they got a chance to knock off the defending state champions, number one team in the state. Browles is in shotgun. Twins to the near side, one receiver far side. Browles straight ahead, giving the ball to Hunter. Hunter gets the first down out at the 35-yard line, a gain of five. Very close to the yardage needed. I say they put it right on the 35. That might not be enough. They will stop the clock momentarily at 318 for a measurement. They got a measure? Yeah. This is very close to the yardage needed. It 
is a first down for Stephenville. All right. On that first down, exactly a minute, they took off the clock. This drive started with 418. We're now at 318, and they'll wind the clock. So you can see from that you need at least two more first downs. With the exception well, you, with them using their timeouts. Exactly. So I guess three more timeouts. Well, the, time. the whole KSTV sports team has gone to the end. The roll lights now. <laughs> Every, we've used the, almost a whole roll here in the second half. Rouse is under center, first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. Hand off to Hunter. Hunter gets out about four yards to the 39-yard line. A pick up a four, and now we're at 253 and counting it. Nice block by Collier, uh, Van Haddam, and also Derek Haney on that block. It gets decision time now for the friendship coaches. When do you start taking your time out? I think it, you decide on what you do after this next play. If, you know, if they hold us to maybe a yard or even two, and you're looking at third and four or five, yeah, let's make it now. But if it's, you know, third and one, you almost have to wait. Under two and a half minutes and counting in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Stevenville by three, second down and six. Trips to the near side, one to the far side. Bryles, inside trap handoff to Hunter. He'll be stacked at the line of scrimmage. So he'll make one forward yard to the 40, and now Friendship the does take out. their timeout. 2-12 to go in the contest. 31-28, Stevenville on top of Friendship. We'll have third and five when we come back. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Well, the Friendship fans across the way are fired up, and why not? They're trailing Stingle only by three. I think I would uh, fake that dive again, maybe run Kendall around the outside. I would agree. Third down and five. Either that or some kind of a, uh, a sprint out anyway. Third and five for the Jackets, their own 40. 2-12 remaining in the game. Stingle by three over Friendship. Bryles under center, one back behind him. That's Hunter, who now comes in motion. Rouse rolling out, looking across the middle. Mackins with a catch and a first down at the 49-yard line of Friendship, and what a gutsy call. Man, what a great pass and a super catch by Mackins. They, they had him in the backfield, ran him up to the right wing. He just ran right past the uh, secondary or the linebackers and was wide open on a little square out. And you and I talked about it, and we said you've got to run on that play so that if you don't make it, you force Friendship into using their second timeout well, he is a riverboat gambler. That is our Riles, and he does. And that was the first completion in, in, in a while, or I should say the second. First and 10 for the Jackets at the Friendship 49, now at 148. Handoff up the left side. Hunter, Hunter down to the 43-yard line, a gain of five. They got to burn one. 141 counting. Do they burn the timeout? They got to. Well, what are they? They're hollering at the referee about something over there. Well, they'll continue to let the clock run. 128 and counting, second down and five. Stephenville right. 31. They just now whistled the play in. Wolf with friendship 28. So it could be, it'll be right at one minute to go in the game when Stephenville has to snap the ball. About 102, actually. Two timeouts remaining for the Tigers. Second and five for Stephenville. Browns under center. He's looking at the play clock. Giving the ball again to Hunter, who has swallowed under he behind tripped. the line of scrimmage. Did trip, but there are a lot of blue jerseys around now him. Now they got to call a timeout. And they, they do take a timeout with 102 remaining. It will be third down and seven when we come back. 31-28, we're back in 30 seconds on KSTV. Third down and seven for the Jackets upcoming, leading 31-28. Now all you uh, offensive coordinators, what would you do now? I think I'd put Kendall in shotgun. I would too. Let, Let him, him scramble, scramble around a little bit. If he sees a wide open player, maybe throw it to him. If not, try to run. But the biggest thing you've got to do if you don't come away with the first down here is you've got to force friendship into using their final timeout. How about fake the toss out to Hunter and, and do the uh, belly to uh, Haney. Derek Haney right up the middle? Well, those two backs are in the backfield, and Bryles will be under center, I believe. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Third down and seven for Stephenville. 102 to go in the contest. 31-28, Stephenville on top of friendship. Play action. Bryles in some trouble. He'll be sacked back at the 46-yard line. They try to fake that no one went for. I believe everyone in blue jerseys was king on Kendall. 56 seconds remaining, and the third timeout has been taken by Friendship. It'll be fourth down, and we'll keep it right here because I'm sure the Jackets will be forced to punt. Well, we'll see what happens. Fourth down and seven. The final timeout has been taken. All right, so you punt it here. If you punt it, let's say 25, 30 yards, 
They're going to get the ball inside their own 20 with no timeouts and roughly 45. 47, yeah, 45, 46 seconds. Oh, well, I did go. not want to turn this one over back to the defense. Not saying they couldn't do the job, but that's not what you want to have in this situation. I want to take uh, credit to the offense for moving the ball down the field and riverboat gambling. What do you think of this? No. Line up in punt formation and let's go for it. No. You don't want to give them. Remember, all they need is a field goal. A field goal to tie. Well, that'd just be about perfect for this thing for it to go into overtime. Oh, my gosh. That's the last thing you want to see. Stephenville will come out in punt formation. Boy, let's just punt this one out of bounds. Moore, the last uh, two times before on his return, took it to the length of the distance for the touchdown. 56 remaining, and Stephenville will punt. Big rush coming. You can tell they're all lined up. Snap back. Kick is away. End over end kick. 10 down to the 5, and it's too good. It goes over 45 yards on the punt. And they will get the ball at the 20-yard line. 47 seconds remaining in the contest. Oh, boy, here we go. Hang on, Jacket fans. And 47 seconds. <laughs> well, obviously, they will be passing Will Friendship, and that has been the thing that's hurt Steamboat a lot today. Bryles is in the game with Gunn. They'll run a two-deep safety. Jackets will be in a free vent. Uh, Jackets trying to get the Steamville fans into this game, and they respond. That front four is going to have to get to the quarterback. A sack would really be big right here. 47 seconds remaining. Twins to the far side, one to the near side. Friendship down by three with the football. Play action, looking to throw. Being sacked, and now escaping at the 15, looking to throw Vineyard out of the flats. The man makes the catch. He does, does not. He was out of bounds. Oh, man, I've got to call every possible scenario there. You thought he was sacked, brother, but he wasn't. He just reached and grabbed the back of his jersey and was pulling him down. I'm trying to get a little bit ahead of myself, I, I guess. Think you are. Well, good thing it used nine seconds and a down. <laughs> 38 seconds. All right, that's it. I'm not calling anything until it actually happens. <laughs> the heck with this trying to predict stuff. I thought he had had it. He, he was in the grass and got away. You were right. Second down and 10. 38 seconds now remaining in the contest. Vineyard under center, two backs behind him. Giving to the fullback who goes across the 25 and out to the 30, and the only bad thing about that, it is a first down and stops the clock. They had a chance to tackle him about the 29, which would have kept the clock rolling. They do stop it momentarily with 33 seconds as they get ready to spot the ball. I'm sure they will down this immediately. Oh, I think they'll go for the play here. I believe I would. They roll the clock. And now immediately, Vineyard throws the ball down to ground it with 30 seconds remaining. Man, if you're going to use three seconds, you might as well run a play. Instead of wasting it down. I guess they don't want the tension of knowing what's going on. 31-28. Stephenville on top of Friendship. 30 seconds remaining. The ball at the 30-yard line of Friendship. Friendship with no timeouts left. Second down and 10. They do have a good kicker. But I would think they probably need about 40 more yards. At least. Vineyard under center, twips to the near side. Play action, straight drop. Look, Vineyard in some trouble. He will be sacked this time, all the way back to the 25-yard line. Gordon Carroll, Parks, and Harmon making the stop with Scott Lee, the front four, doing the work. It's third down now and 15 seconds left and counting. And just grounding the ball immediately is and Vineyard with 11 seconds left, and that makes it fourth down now upcoming. The bad thing for Friendship is they would sent their receivers so far down the field they all had to try to get back, and they had to burn it down. Well, I believe on a case like that, I'd run them out of bounds and have fresh receivers ready just to go in and line up to spike the ball. We're trying to get Parks out of the game to put an extra defender in. They got four defensive backs now standing 20 yards away from the line of scrimmage. 11 seconds remaining. 31-28, Steve on top of Friendship. The ball is at Friendship's own 26 yard line it's fourth down and 14. So Stephenville is going to play with Harmon, Carroll, and Lee up front. They're going to go to a prevent. Ugh, I hate prevent. Three-man rush. Let's see if they can get to it. Vineyard under center. Straight drop. Looking to throw. Throw across the middle. The ball is tipped and then it's caught and then dropped. Oh goodness gracious. Four oh, seconds oh. remaining. 
if the man had been able to hold on to the football that was Chad Mandrell, they would have had a first down at the 50-yard line with four seconds remaining after the ball was tipped around the 35. And that's the ball game. Stephenville is going to escape with a win today. The ball will turn over on down to Stephenville at the 26-yard line. Good grief. Stephenville. That was almost a circus catch on the fifth. I thought he had it, didn't you? Well, Whoa. he did have it, but Whoa. he got upended by a yellow jacket at the 45. I did not see who that was. Boy, and how interesting would that have been? They'd have spiked the ball and been about one second left, and they would have had one chance to heave it. Mm. This one was a lot closer than it should have been, fans. Boy, I tell you, that was a great contest by friendship. Riles is under center. We'll go to an E, and this one is done. Stephenville, for the eighth time in the 90s, will advance to the quarterfinals. Final score today, Stephenville 31, Wolford Friendship 28. The winning streak is now at 23 straight. Stay tuned. The postgame show is up next, back in three minutes on KSTV. Thank you. 